Okay, sorry about the extended break, but we are ready to go. And the good news is um, <clears throat> I still haven't sort of gone into the major reserves yet. So I have a little chocolate, but uh, I've got some tea, I've got some coffee, I've got lots of water, uh, and we are going to be good to go for quite a bit more Book of Hours. So I hope you are all well. I'm just going to take a minute here to get everything sorted out again. Our, it's actually not a bad time to do a recap. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a recap from the very start um, because I think it may be some value. We're essentially at the seven and a half hour mark of the stream now. So I think it would be good to just sort of review where we've come from, especially if people haven't seen the game before. So uh, we began washed up on St. Brendan's Cove. We were assigned the library in a hush house, which has been abandoned for seven years after a fire. And we worked our way up to Brancrug Village, where we met our old friend from the war, Denzel, and sort of uh, managed to introduce ourselves to the rest of the community. I guess we haven't really introduced ourselves to uh, Reverend Timothy yet, um, but we've got, kind of gotten to know people. We have uh, been slowly working our way to restoring the library uh, at Hush House. So we opened up the Cucurbit Bridge, the Keeper's Lodge, where we're currently resting. Um, and as we've been opening up this house, we're learning a little bit more about its history. So first of all, we're not seeing any evidence of a fire, at least the kind of fire that would result in the house being abandoned. We're also starting to learn a little bit about the, uh, the previous occupants. So. There are the Barons de Wolf um, and the kind of period known as the Baronial Period. They became Barons after Henry VIII uh, gave it to them, dissolved the Mon Monastery of St. Brendan's, which was the Solar Gothic Period. After the de Wolfs, there was a period known as the Curia Period, where an organization known as the Curia of the Isle sort of took over. They seemed to lose control after one of the librarians uh, basically bankrupted it. And so there was a deal where a branch, a government branch known as Nocturnal Branch, <laughs> essentially made them a deal to say, um, you know, we will you know, we'll pay for some stuff, but you have to submit to inspections and you have to give up some of the, um, some of the, uh, the aisle for prison. And that was the last period before uh, this fire. So, the main experience of the game largely is to sort of go in and sort of find out what's happening. But of course, you are a librarian, so this does involve cataloging, reading books. We've been slowly uh, gaining our knowledge, which of course has had this, it's been a nice little flywheel, right? Our, our knowledge has allowed us to learn um, even more skills from reading more and more of those books. Uh, and so I've not yet really committed a lot of things to the Tree of Wisdoms. Uh, and that's mostly just because I, my existing elements of the soul have already been working for me. We've started to kind of hit some limits in terms of our, our reach. But on the other hand, we've got so many books here to be studying and, and examining that uh, it hasn't really been all that much of an impediment. So we will continue for the rest of the day. We've been cycling through in terms of making some money and um, also restoring elements of the soul. And then uh, I think probably the last set of tasks that I'm going to do will be to uh, catalog the remaining books while reading, um, reading the ones that I can. And then we'll sort of review where we're at. At some point, I would like to try and write a letter to Fraser Strathcoin to try and get him to visit the house, but I do need to make sure that I have enough scale uh, to be able to do that. And of course, if anybody does have any questions about the game, what it's like, what it's, you know, what's the point, what's new in the DLC, definitely let me know. Um, but I'm going to try as much as I can to just play uh, the way that I would, with the exception that I don't normally speed things up when I play the game myself. Um, and in this case here, I just wanted to speed it up so I can try and show you a little bit more of what's in the DLC. <laughs> It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. The five letters on memory. Julian Cosley, epistolatory treatise on matters memorial and mnemonic, addressed to his then friend Claude Hersault, the mystic and antiquarian. The book is partly a practical manual, expounding memory palace-like techniques and partly an exploration of memory rarefied modes in which sense or experience persist outside a mortal mind. This is an early work, and by Cosley's standards, it brims with optimism, even enthusiasm. 
If books, he suggests, are the memory that does not die, then perhaps with sufficient endeavors, memory's murderer might be contained. So we get rhyme and remembrance for that. We also get a regret. That's our first regret, so I'm going to put that on its own shelf. And because this is the first uh, we're learning rhyme and remembrance, we can just put this straight into the into the list. So use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Ooh, the stolen secret's an interesting one. I think we can even keep that. So I kind of want to hang on to the stolen secret so I can use it with traveling at night or advice on containment. <clears throat> and we can keep knock things, so I think I'm gonna do that. As nice as it would be to read Ava Lady Ava's Repose, I think I can probably get by without it. Uh, Whisperfire asks, I've got an idea. When you get around to invite Fraser Strathcoin back, can you cook him that boiled egg, that scale food, right? Will that work? Am I understanding the mechanic right? You're partly right. <clears throat> so I'll, it's actually not a bad idea for me to go over this because it is going to take some effort for us to... Um, it, it actually takes some effort for us to be able to, um, to get a salon together. So there's a number of conditions that need to be met for a salon. First of all, you need the appropriate room. So, for instance, right now, the picnic in the Physic Garden wouldn't work because it's only available in spring and summer. <clears throat> now, it's not the only room where you can host a salon. Um, in this case, uh, the refectory is probably the most likely one for me to be able to host it. But there's a number of different rooms in which you can, um, in which you can host the, the salon. So that's the first thing. You need an appropriate room. Uh, if, if I wanted to cook Fraser the Egg, um, what I would do is I would invite him as a guest and there are certain conditions that need to be met before you can actually host a salon. Usually it's a question of making sure that you have sort of the appropriate number of courses and that you have people who, um, who are sort of satisfied in terms of their needs. So as an example, let's say we've got Fraser Strathcoin and we've got Arthur Moore. So for Fraser, we would give him uh, the egg. So the egg would work. I think that would count as a first course. Um, but then we would also need to give him some kind of scale drink. So probably the best option there would be, uh, I can't remember if it's Schloss Jannings or Domain Reveille. So Schloss Jannings has a scale. So we'll give um, Fraser Schloss Jannings. We'll uh, feed him an egg. Uh, and then let's say we bring in Arthur Moore. So Arthur Moore would need some lantern. So perhaps as a drink, we would give him the Cater and Hero Second Flush of Psalm. And then we could give, uh, as a food item, um, I guess the pickled mushrooms wouldn't really work because it doesn't have lantern. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember one of the lantern food items right now, and I'm drawing a blank. There's like a pie that has just about everything inside of it. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, the um, you need food and drink for every guest. You need a certain number of courses. Um, and you need to make sure that the room is available at the time. So in the case of feeding Fraser the, the egg, I would only be able to do that if I actually had a salon for him, which, you know, maybe you can with one person. I haven't actually tried to do an underpopulated one, but it, it would be a little more complicated than what you're describing, just because I would want to make sure that I had, um, I probably would have multiple guests. <clears throat> okay, um, I think I'm gonna keep the stolen secret. The last slot, is, this is a fun one. <clears throat> so the last slot is for the secretary persistent. In Hush House, an empty place is often traditionally left at the table for Rowena, protectress of Hush House, and once secretary persistent of the Curia of the Isle. If you one day propose a successor for Rowena, seat them here. So you do have options. Secretary Persistent must not only be immortal, but must stand with one foot outside the laws of the hours, and so she must always be a legion. Okay, um, I think I'm probably going to hang on to the stolen secret, but let's see how far we can get. <clears throat> Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms, Rhyme and Remembrance, to speak with the dead, to torment the living, to celebrate both. So that's two winter and one moon. 
basically going to be kind of like the ragged crossroads for me because we are going to have another level of that, but that's fine. <clears throat> okay. Again, I'm not expecting too much from Denzel at this point. It is very interesting. The beta version did not have a full list of candidates for that role, so um, I'm definitely beginning to appreciate a few implications of, of who the secretary persistent can be. Catalog a solar period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's solar gothic period, roughly between the 1000s and the 1500s. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Okay, I think I'm going to keep the stolen secret. <clears throat> now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. It's late. Another time? You can't speak with assistants at night. Make use of them quickly or let them go home. Now I have an idea of this book's nature and its contents. The Rose of Hypatia, a volume of collected teachings of the Sisterhood of the Knot, that arcane contemplative order that existed in all histories, but in some was very powerful indeed. This was recorded by Hypatia and dedicated to Saint Nympha. So we're probably going to have to do some sort of overflow for the... Um, actually, you know what? I'll anticipate the overflow. So regardless of what happens, um, I'm going to bring in Denzel. I've carried a memory like a flambeau safe through excuse me, through the mazes of night. This will complete once dawn has come. So, let's see if I can make some progress. So we've got the stolen secret here. Uh, if I read Traveling at Night Volume 1, and then from there we take Surgeries and Exsanguinations. Knock, a gate flung wide. I am a match for this book. So this one is a reasonably well-known book in the setting, so this one uh, should give me an impulse, which would give me Moth and Nectar. Really, it's just a matter of sort of knocking down the various texts that I want. Um, I believe this may also give me a rose, so that will be helpful. Oh, and it's another rainy day, so we are bringing in... This is why I kept the health aside. Definitely bringing in the Orchard Keeper. In autumn, the Orchard Keepers come to sell their wares at Brankrug. A shilling will buy one's health. And Oriflams. Oriflams, established 1776, Sense, Signs, Sciences. Dear librarian, we would like to offer you this opportunity to purchase. So in the setting of the Secret Histories, Oriflams is sort of an occult uh, auction house. eBay for, uh, eBay for goths. Um, so essentially they will... In the game Cultist Simulator, they actually sell more than books, um, or do they? Uh, you can at least sell, uh, you can sell to them more than books. I think they just give you books, though. Um, but in this case here, the Red Book of Brittany, um, quite an expensive one. Uh, 12 rows, and that would cut off my ability to learn languages. So as much as it pains me, I think I'm going to leave the Red Book of Brittany aside, um, just because I... Um, I do need I do need that money for other purposes. But we are going to use the Orchard Keeper's assistance. So proffer a tool. I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. Secretary Salvant? Oh my goodness, I completely forgot. So um, yeah, this list is bigger than... Uh, than before. Um, I also forgot, so we, we saw this open up, but I didn't actually talk about this. So we've got the well. Uh, there has been a well here since the days of the sisterhood, and superstitions have gathered around it like leaves and drifts. Its water has a healing virtue if drawn on a night of a new moon. It's ill luck to draw from it if you hear an owl. If you drip the blood of a living enemy into the well, they'll drown, and so on. Certainly, when Numa comes, the mists lie thick here. So we've got a couple of other areas. So we've got the Creeper Crowded Descent. That will take either uh, Moon, Nectar, or Scale. 
And then there's the overgrown kitchen garden, which is either nine grail or nine nectar. So definitely a tricky one, but this has a number of benefits. <clears throat> there's also the wrecked pantry. And I think, yeah, so, so I may actually give, I may try and give this a shot in terms of opening up the overgrown kitchen garden, just because it will have some practical benefits as far as cooking is concerned. But we'll see. And I'm keeping Denzel as sort of a reserve, just so that when the time comes, we can um, we can work with the. Uh, sorry, we can work with the. Um, um, the memories. While we're waiting, catalog a solar period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's solar Gothic period, roughly between the 10, uh, 1000s and 1500s. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Probably do the same with the Trist, actually. Unless I think... Uh, actually, Lady Ava's Repose with the Ragged Crossroads, I can read that. So I'm just going to wait on the knife. This tool has boosted their aspects appropriately, so we'll now talk about the weather, more useful than one might expect, especially in Britain. So from there, because Ava's desk takes moon, we can add the tryst. <clears throat> I will take that knife, which has got the winter aspect. We can now combine that with Ragged Crossroads. And then we use Lady Ava's Repose. Now this is actually going to involve some effort on my part. I'm actually probably going to need to bring the tryst back. <clears throat> That's fine, uh, because we will have the money for it. So winter, a conclusion. I can master this mystery, enough winter to match mystery winter. And am I actually bringing anything back? I am not. So it's autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. And now have, I have an idea of this book's nature and its contents. Observations on the Peacock Door. This is the first book that requires VAC for this playthrough. So that's definitely not a language that we know. I'll, do I have space? No, I do not. Put that on top of the desk here. But Okay. take advantage of the weather while it lasts. So we're going to give the health here. Now what I'm thinking is we still have a bit of dandelion wine left over. So currently they're at seven, but if we have the garden, and the garden is something that I can potentially get some food out of, it probably makes sense to unlock that sooner rather than later. So let's serve the last of the dandelion wine. Pour out. Pour it out. Feed that to the orchard keeper, and then we should be able to um, get another source of food. Better now. Okay, so we're going to use the shot. We'll work alongside each other. A nice drop. I can offer my assistant something to drink. This will increase their aspects. They'll also be glad of the refreshment. And Traveling at Night, Volume 1. The annotated dream journals of Christopher Olopoli, sometimes called the only readable occultist. Uh, literate, entertaining, bewildering. The wood lies outside the walls of the Mansus. As any student of the histories knows, the Mansus has no walls. Alopoli describes how he came to make repeated visits to a dream wood via what he calls silver dreams. Trying to think your way to the wood, he explains, is like thinking your way to being in love. But I did find a secret that helped. So for that, we get the impulse, we get the lesson edicts liminal, I'm going to make an Impulse's Shelf. And we can add that to our collection right away. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Okay, so we now have nine nectar for the Orchard Keeper, which means that the overgrown kitchen garden is accessible to us. So this place has been surrendered to wind and weed. Bees buzz menacingly. Somewhere, something clucks plaintively. And now we'll talk with Denzel to see if we can just get some more memories. Oh, and I should get my health restored when I can. So fewer, uh, fewer cataloging cases, but that's fine because we're doing, uh, we're doing all of this to level up our, our various skills and such. 
Uh, question, what are the aspects of the occult scrap? I forgot. No, that's a good question. So um, <clears throat> secret histories are layered beneath the one that we know, like notes in a rare wine. The librarian knows this well. So it has two knock, two moth, two rose, um, and then its other aspects are memory, persistent, and uh, omen. So omens can be used in some special slots, which uh, aren't necessarily accessible for memories. Persistent means that it doesn't go away overnight. Uh, and then this little symbol here will be helpful for evolution if I want to be able to level something up. So I could use Horomachistry with this to evolve my soul. Once you've committed a skill to the Horomachistry wisdom, you can use that skill with this to combine two identical soul cards into a greater one. But you must use a skill that you've attuned to that wisdom, and the attunement will work only once. So normally this happens in workstations, but there are a couple of memories that do that as well. So overall, it's pretty good. Um, but um, it's um, it's just it's hard to get. So there is a specific item that you can get that will give you access to more um, more occult scraps. But I don't currently have that item, so I try to guard these somewhat jealously. Okay, Edicts Liminal, the precepts and limitation and division established by the enigmatic conclave of ours, sometimes called the Chancel. So this has both Scolacosophy and Nictodromy branches. It's two moth, which is good because uh, we currently are sort of short on some of the moth stuff. Although I think most of our moths are 10. Yeah, 10 or higher. But given the fact that I've got a tryst, I don't want to turn down the possibility that I can, I can make use of this. Um, we will follow up on advice on containment at some point. It doesn't really matter if, if I use surgeries and exsanguinations or edicts liminal. Um, yeah, for now, I'm just going to settle for my, my current routine. Okay, as I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. Now, I think I was going to use my health. I was going to use my health because we wanted to level up Ryman remember. Nope, that doesn't make sense. I want to level up my tryst. So Lady Ava's Repose. A medita now we haven't really heard about Lady. We we keep seeing references to Lady Ava, but this one actually winds up going into some details uh, about um, the end. So we're starting the story in the wrong spot. Lady Ava's Repose, a meditation on the drowning of Lady Ava de Wolf and her two grandchildren, written in the years when the estate was abandoned by Father Theo once the DeWolf family chaplain, one of the few to remain on the isle in those desolate years. There are so many stories of her heritage, so many rumors of her persistence, we might easily choose to believe that the Grand Twins escaped, even that they yet lived beyond the sea. Father Theo has come to believe that Ava sought an escape from a family curse, the pale heritage of Hafrin, her forebear, or the curse placed upon her line by the cunning man Red William in the time of Hendrik DeWolf. He had begun by believing neither curse was real, but as the book concludes, he decides that he is determined to believe in them, rather than accept the three deaths as a futile tragedy. One does not so easily escape the long necessity of faith, he concludes. Now, it's worth noting here, right, in the early 1530s, the last abbot of St. Brendan's, called Roaring Richard, sat down his conversations with the illiterate local cunning man, Red William. And, right? curse placed upon the line by the cunning man Red William. So uh, we have in fact heard not just Lady Ava before, but Red William has appeared as well. <clears throat> okay, so we already have a regrets shelf. Didn't you say that the wolf line ended in madness and death? Is this book the conclusion of that story? Possibly, although the madness hasn't necessarily come up yet. So um, this is somebody speaking after the fact in terms of the events. Um, so I'll read this again just so that we know the context. Lady Ava's Repose, a meditation on the drowning of Lady Ava de Wolf and her two grandchildren, written in the years when the estate was abandoned by Father Theo, once the de Wolf family chaplain, one of the few to remain on the isle in those desolate years. There are so many stories of her heritage, so many rumors of her persistence. We might easily choose to believe that the Grand Twins escaped, even that they live yet beyond the sea. Father Theo has come to believe that Ava sought an escape from a family curse, the pale heritage of Hafrin, her forebear, or the curse placed upon her line by the cunning man Red William in the time of Hendrik de Wolf. 
He had begun by believing neither curse was real, but as the book concludes, he decides that he is determined to believe in them rather than accept the three deaths as a futile tragedy. One does not so easily escape the long necessity of faith, he concludes. So it would seem here that the author of this particular text believes that both Ava and the two grandchildren died, but he does also make reference to the fact that there are rumors of her persistence. And this is something that will actually be dealt with with some of the other texts as well. But it is fair to say that Ava is the last of the brand crews. You'll notice that it says, uh, you can just see it, Seventh Baroness, and then we've got First Librarian. So there is a, um, at least as far as the, uh, the niche is concerned, um, there was no dwarf following Ava. Okay, so let's see if we can get Rhyme and Remembrance leveled up. We'll need the Trist for that. As far as future reading is concerned, it would be nice to read advice on containment, but we're not better, we don't have anything that will make it easier for us to um, to read the uh, the knock texts yet, so that one is a nice to have. Beoris book two is also a nice to have, but that's going to involve a bit of effort on my part as well. So we can oh no, uh, we can just read that straight with Ragged Crossroads. So never mind, we'll read that as soon as we can. It's the Orchid Transfigurations that's going to involve a little bit of work. Oriflams, thanks you for your continued interest. The book becomes, sorry, the book may become available for purchase again later. The Kitchen Garden. In 1652, Musgrave de Wolf caught a traveling peddler stealing vegetables from his, this garden, an eccentric wanderer who went by Ricardo Milagro. Musgrave's ancestors would simply have hung the fellow, but Musgrave decreed seven years' service in the garden instead. When the seven years were up, Milagro had proved his worth as a gardener and chose to make Grand Krug his home. The grapevines here are cultivated with the rootstock he carried in his pack. So we've got quite a few things here. Uh, so let's go left to right. So we have got the garden, nourishing vegetables in summer and autumn. Remembering that we do need a nectar skill, so we're not actually do, able to do any of the gardening yet. A beehive. Bees, like librarians, are not to be trifled with. So this requires uh, nectar and scale, so basically my health. And then knowledge, we need either nectar scale or uh, Lyterian. More garden. Gentle climate of Cornwall supports grapevines, harvest in spring and summer. And finally, Terence the chicken. Was this magnificent and indomitable beast named for the rector's indomitable and magnificent housekeeper? Best not to inquire too closely. Three scale, one sky. It is a beast, it is a comfort, and it is cooperative. We also have Tuppence, the other chicken. Tuppence's most notable quality, all observers will agree, is that she is not Terence. So you can actually interact with these to get eggs. Um, we have an example of an egg here, the hen's egg, delicious when cooked, alarming when dropped. And then the rooms that we can potentially open. So we've got the infested wine cellar that will require 10 grail or 10 moth, something much bigger layered here. Walls and ceiling are smeared with slimes. It's gone, but its children remain, wriggling in every shadow. We'll have to clear, lure, or drive them out. And then we have a few other rooms available to us. So we already had the wrecked pantry. That's a seven heart or seven nectar. The maze crazed room, eight heart or eight rose. And the wounded room, eight heart or eight knock. And that's, of course, on top of the reeking chamber, the web snared room, the grand descent second floor, the gloomy room, or the neglected room. So certainly no shortage of things for me to do. So that Trist is going to help me. Um, uh, the Trist is going to help me um, bring Rhyme and Remembrance up. So again, you need... The easy way to remember how many memories you'll need rather than test it is that basically you need a number of memories equal to the current level of your skill. So because 
Like, so essentially rhyme and rem remembrance, when you don't know it, you don't need any memories to acquire that as a, uh, as a skill. When you have rhyme and remembrance and you want to bring it to level two, you already have it at level one, hence you require one memory. Plus the lesson, of course. The lesson is always something you're going to require. If you have rhyme and remembrance five, then, and you want to turn it into six, then you're going to need five memories. And that applies for basically every skill that you want to learn, including lessons. You can actually, or sorry, lessons, Jesus, um, including uh, languages. So if you want to level your language up, you can. Um, now, whether or not that's your thing, um, sorry, just one second. Um, if you, um, you know, if you, there's a number of different reasons why you might want to level up a language, but um, basically you can treat it just like any other skill. The only thing is you can't really craft anything with languages. You just use it to be able to read certain books. But the main thing that we're interested in here, we need either a moon or a winter. Well, we have that with regret, so we'll consider there's always more to learn. Improve the skill to level two. This will increase its aspects, which will help with crafting and make it suitable for higher branches on the Tree of Wisdoms. So the hindsight would have worked as well. To speak with the dead, to torment the living, to celebrate both. So we got three winter, two moon. Again, nothing really that we don't already have access to, but um, essentially all of my skills I want at a minimum of two anyway, just because we will have all of our all of our baselines taken up with um, with languages. When I get around to it, of course. Okay, foresight. So um, again, we're at a point here where one of the main things I'm concerned about is getting uh, getting these things leveled up as quickly as I can. Um, I would normally imagine that we would probably want the fear because we need the edge for Deoris, but in fact, we already have Ragged Crossroads at four edge, so essentially anything I do will work there. Advice on containment requires knock, so we don't have a knock in any of these except for the occult scrap. So really, it's my choice in terms of what I hang on to. I think maybe I'll just keep the foresight. But that's a purely arbitrary choice on my part. Okay, and as before, um, I think three rain in a, I think re three rain at the same time would be a fairly incredible coincidence. But I am going to just hold off um, because you never know, and if it is raining, I want to take advantage of that. Okay, so the cloudy day doesn't do that much for us. It's kind of our, our choice in terms of what we want to do. So I'll use the ragged crossroads right away. That'll be for Deoris, and we know that we're going to get Disciplines of the Hammer for that, so we don't need to commit anything else. Now next up, because there's not a whole lot that I need to do health-wise, I think I can uh, talk to Denzil. And again, we'll just farm him for memories when we can. And then in addition, I'm going to make some money at the Sweet Bones. I'm basically going to cycle that um, Shapt. I'm going to renew it... Um, over the course of the day, and then at the end of the day, we'll, um, we'll use it to catalog a book. So here we will use the metal, catalog the solar period book, and we'll do the same with the shop. So again, making some decent progress on this, we've got three solar period books and three dawn period books. Of course, once those are done, uh, I need to figure out what I'm doing with the rest of it. I, I do actually need to uh, to decide how I'm going to accomplish my my overall goals. Okay, I've carried a memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. So still not sure what I'm doing with the foresight, but it's nice to have. A Descent of the Shell, a treatise on eggs, light, and optics by Abbas Melisynth, dazzlingly illuminated with the renderings of the Abbas's visions. So that's a 14 forge text. That's definitely above my pay grade. So let's make a new shelf here. Yeah. 
and Unhatched Hymns, that's a 10 lantern text that also requires Sabazine, so we would need that from Arthur Moore. Uh, these, I don't think we can fit another 10 in. Nuts. Okay, well, now Unhatched Hymns is actually a pretty useful one. This is more a matter of convenience than any any real design. Now, if I want, I can restore any of these at the Sweet Bones. I may take the opportunity, I may not. Um, Uh, Revelation. So I always want to pay attention to that because Revelation's normally been something that's enabled us to do something special. I could be fighting old battles, but I think it's good to double check. Um, now, I guess if it comes down to it, so Prophecies of Glory needs eight. Now we don't have Lantern inside of any of these skills though, so I don't really see how we would make eight happen. So yeah, I think we'll say the time for level th leveling things up based on Lantern is in the past. Oh, we should still talk with Denzel though. Better now. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do here is we've got one of the three. This is going to be two of the three. De Oris Book 2 in Latin, a 19th century reprint by the indefatigable Nathaniel Darcy Evers of a 14th century Latin translation of a 4th century work. This volume deals mostly with the hour called Lionsmith, the hour called the Tribune of Scars, and with their enmity. The Lionsmith makes monsters to defeat the Tribune, but the Scars of the Tribune are each a weapon. So Disciplines the Hammer, and Foresight. No shortage of Foresight on our side, but... So this is an easy one to commit. We'll just put that in the Consider Verb, use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And one of the things I do want to start thinking about now is how I'm going to be able to generate some, uh, some new inks. So I have a couple of options. I can open up the gloomy room. Um, I can also try and get some, some heart through the storm. Um, but I am going to need to start thinking about how I make some future progress. So, Disciplines of the Hammer. To purify and combine the selves and the essences, the hammer shapes gates and shatters doors within us and without. So, two-edge, forge... Um, Nothing, again, that we don't already get. So Bells and Brasieries gives me two Forge and Ragged Crossroads gives me four Edge. But um, having, more, having more skills is just generally a useful thing. So let's, um, let's keep at it. Again, right now I'm farming uh, Denzel for memories, particularly because the secret... Um, what was it? The secret... Um, Ah, what's it called? Secret. Um, stolen Secret. Uh, that is one that he can generate and is kind of helpful for reading that last knock text. Okay, so I've loaded up. We will turn this into some money and then I will catalog two more books. So I think we, I think we actually are net positive in terms of cash, which is good. And then of course we're up the books. Uh, the Serenity of the Blackwood. Now this one is Curse. This is actually the first um, 
uh, the first infested book that we've seen. The Serenity of the Black Wood, an allegorical history of the House of Leith, which is here implied was inspired by the centipede. Serrano Blackwood is an occult alias to this day. So it's a 12 uh, moth mystery, but it has witch worms, tiny larvae with half human faces. Fortunately, they rarely develop into their imago stage, but even as larvae, their whispering can torment senses and distort thoughts. These can affect your shaft and whist and spread to nearby objects. You can remove them with a skill that is effective against infestations and at least seven winter. Now, I will confess I'm a little surprised about this because it says that it can affect your shaft and whist. I did investigate this book with my shaft, but for one reason or another, I was not affected by it. So I'm happy about that. Normally what happens in the game if you, um, if you interact with an infested book, you will wind up um, your um, uh, your your uh, element of the soul will wind up afflicted, and so uh, what that means is that you are going to um, you. Uh, it's easier if I show you. Um, probably looking at Denzel's house is the most easy. So it says a smoky room. In this case, malady, something has snared or sickened my soul. Soul cards can be malady tainted when you are exposed to dangerous influences, sometimes when you fail in a task. Maladies cannot be exhausted, but your soul is altered and weakened, and there can be serious consequences if they go untreated. So effectively what happens here with the malady, um, normally what would happen is I wouldn't be able to use that shaft, say, to, um, to bring Denzel in from the smithy. Um, but I would still be able to use it for crafting. So some people do develop strategies in this game around, um, you know, having some kind of an afflicted, afflicted element of the soul to just uh, allow them to be a little bit more productive during the day. I tend not to deliberately try to develop maladies, but generally over the course of playing the game, you wind up with one or two and there's some measures that you can tra take to try and heal yourself. But one way or the other, the witch, uh, witch worms didn't get me. I'm happy about that. And we're going to uh, quarantine this book to make sure that it doesn't um, doesn't hurt anybody. Let's keep that away from the general library. Um, we can put it in the room with a telescope for now. And the instruments of the heart. Sister Isabel, then presentress of the Abbey Church of St. Brendan's, engages in dialogues with a uh, dialogues with a heart long of a kind called Wendrazon that has taken partial possession of her body. This was the ten pile. And I'm going to need to think a little bit about what I want to do with my memories. I think I may wind up keeping the solace, but I'm going to I'm going to think a bit about that. We get one more chat with Denzel before the end of the day. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. Okay, he does a lot with silence this man. So, Here's what I'm thinking as far as the um, solace is concerned. So this gives us two heart. And what we want to do is we're going to want to take a follower uh, or a, um, we're going to want to take one of our assistants and get them to a point where they can improve my, um, where they can, can open up that room. So we've already got the gloomy room taken care of. Um, and then the web snared room and all of that, these are harder than what I normally go after. So really we want to see whether or not we can make something work with a neglected room. So if I try to get five, we've got one with the health, we've got two with the solace, so that brings us three. Uh, we could employ the kitchen bowls, so that brings us up to four. So then the question is, where does the five come from? And we have a few options. So I think one of, yeah, the Schloss Jannings will give us heart. The, I believe the um, TRN drinking cocoa also gives us heart. Ruby Wise Ruin does, but I'd really rather not use that because it gives us a lot of grail too. Oh, but more importantly, the um, Isle Water gives us heart. So we could probably draw that up out of the Hush House well, although I suppose doing so would keep... Uh, Denzel from using it. Anyways, we've got our answer. I will definitely keep the solace because that's a way that we're going to be able to get Denzel to open up the neglected room 
and the neglected room will actually, uh, you may notice that there is a film projector in there, which would be helpful for a few different reasons. So as is usually the case, uh, we want to see what the weather is before we commit too heavily to things, but I definitely know we're going to be using Denzel no matter what. Okay, it's a gale, so this is also this is going to have some implications for the day. Uh, I may not want to take the neglected room in this case. I may actually want to try and open up something like the web snared room or one of these other more difficult to enter areas. So Denzel rarely works for free, but he won't take payment for helping a friend. The other possibility here is that we do have some sky texts that may be useful to open up. Um, so. On resonance requires six sky, we would bring four, five, yeah, I'm one short, so not a good idea to follow through with the sky stuff. Nope, hang on. Two, five, six, no, we could actually read on resonance, and we would get more bells and braseries for that. That would boost my forge, which potentially gets me ambrosial. Um, okay, it kind of pains me to give up a gale um, to read a book, but here's what I'm thinking here. We read on resonance, so that will allow me to level up bells and braseries. Bells and braseries would then have three forge. So with three forge, metal brings that to five. Uh, the square or the spanners bring that to six. And then we could use a foresight, which brings us up to eight, which means that ambrosial and a shape and smoke are two that we would be able to uh, to read as a result of that. So obviously, there's a few dominoes that fall if I um, if I use that particular um, if I level up that particular skill. So with that in mind, um, we will. Use the pale. Ooh. The reading room is probably better. Okay, so we take on resonance, the gale. Uh, we add furs and feathers, and we add the astrolabe. There we go. Sky harmony. I can master this mystery. Enough sky to match mystery sky. So what I'm going to want to do here is set aside either the metal or the shaft um, because I'm going to need to level up bells and braseries. And then the plan is still going to be that I talk with Denzil about improving, like I still want him to be able to use the, or to get through the neglected room. So we'll still talk with him about the health. Uh, what I might do here is restore the shaft at the sweet bones and I might just cycle that over the course of the day. And then for the metal, we'll use that to catalog the last solar period book. This book was probably written around the time, sorry, the time of Hush House's solar Gothic period, roughly between the 10 hundreds and the 15 hundreds. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. All right, so we're gonna use the, so uh, the solace with Denzel when the time comes. Okay, sorry, just bear with me a second. I don't think I'll take a break here, but I just want to make a note of something. Okay, we'll work alongside each other. Now we'll talk with him about the solace. I can discuss a memory with my assistants. I've always, one thing I've really enjoyed about this game, I know I've been on and off in terms of talking about some of the role-playing elements for it, but if you think about something like the storm or the gale and that fact that they have higher aspects than others, right? How do so many stories start? It was a dark and stormy night. And there's sort of this idea that, you know, these are times of great power um, and that's sort of embodied in the game in the sense that you have big things happening when um, 
you know, when this kind of weather is coming up. I think it's a really neat idea. Um, so I, I do like it when uh, this sort of lines up with some of the other, um, other expectations we have. Okay, a second glory. The Prince Juse celebrates the extirpation of the gods who were stoned, those hours who preceded humanity. So again, another difficult to understand book. I don't know if we have the shelf space for it, so. I will try and restore these when I can, but right now I'm focused on uh, using this to earn a little bit of money. Better now. There's not much work on offer in Brandkrug, but I can find sixpence worth of odd jobs. And memories don't last long outside books, but it's made a difference for the day. So, um, I guess at this point I would use the cake bowls, or kitchen bowls, cake dime. And I will use a glass of water when the time comes, but now is not that time. I guess we can serve the... Uh, Pour out. Pour it out. This tool has boosted their aspects appropriately. So here we'll give them a glass of water. That brings them up to five. I can offer my assistant something to drink. This will increase their aspects. They'll also be glad of the refreshment. And in fact, I can probably just convert this into a glass of water now. It's a half pitcher, so... There we go. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So we'll use the health here to drop some more water. And here we go. On resonance, experiments in ithistry by the skysmith Everett Vinzant, remembering that we did actually hear from Vinzant before with um, Vinzant's minglings. Vincent suggests percussion instruments that might be sympathetic to a number of hours and names. Some are more likely than others. Vincent uncontroversially suggests drums of various materials as sympathetic instruments for the Thunderskin and its ascendant Dwenderzones. He proposes bells of bronze and iron for the Lionsmith and the Colonel. He spends some time on the design of a bee rattle for the Malachite, but doesn't seem entirely confident in his findings. All right, so that's another foresight. There's bells and brasieries. Uh-oh, where did I put you? There you go. We'll put that beside the other Vincent work. Okay, so we want to level up bells and brasieries. One here, we'll use the shaft, we'll use the lesson, we'll use the foresight. There's always more to learn. Down to the Grushins. This has boosted their aspects appropriately. So here I'm going to keep talking with Denzil just so that I can get some more memories. We don't have anything that will take overnight with us. Um, and I'm not in any rush to open up the neglected room. It's really the fact that we had the Gale that helped. So the skill is now level two. Its power aspects have also increased. So this gives us a little bit more forge, which again, I will eventually turn into reading a Shape and Smoke, and Ambrosial. In fact, we'll add that to my collection now. Actually, that's useful. We'll take that overnight. I may just scrap the whole thing entirely, and um, we'll get to reading Ambrosial right away. The thing that's nice about Ambrosial is that it does have a nectar aspect, so um, it also means that I can do some gardening. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. And here, drop water, an odd rattle below. Oh, right. <laughs> it is a lot with silence, this man. So I don't think I'm going to do anything other than keep the foresight, but I figure I can get a couple more memories just to see what comes up. All right, 
Um, I think I'm ready to open up the neglected room. The room above might once have been some sort of lounge, but the furniture and equipment have been smashed and overturned. The walls are streaked with mildew, and unlovely smell wafts from further up. So the foresight's going to be what we rest on, just because it's way too convenient to be able to read, uh, to get ambrosial at this point. Better now. Turn you into money. A familiar iron key nestles in the bucket. Hush house key, heavy enough that it takes both hands to turn. Heavy enough to brain someone, though you'd need both hands for that too. And here we go, the patient's lounge. In this room, the accursed of the Great War gathered to recuperate. Those who had suffered something no more horrible, but somewhat more mysterious than the war's usual wounds to body and spirit. An eruption of worms, perhaps, or the risks at the military end of the Suppression Bureau activities. Among them were minor luminaries of the invisible world, Christopher Alopoli, Zachary Wakefield, Harvey Hattington, but not Brian Levinson, who had been ninth librarian and under whose tenure the infirmary had flourished. He enlisted, he served for a time as a medical officer on the Western Front. His body was never found. So there's a number of items in here, but probably most notable, the projector. Governor Collars had this installed in the 20s as a treat for prisoners allowed to recover in the infirmary. Or so he said. Rumor had it that he was a secret Keaton fan and didn't want to motor all the way up to Exeter to see the latest feature. We have a lacquered bone chess set, born of battles, two edge, one winter, the Cater and Hero Second Flush of Sam, a cup of that, another, and a pot. We also have an uncatalogued nocturnal book. Here the phrase heavy enough to brain someone uh, was something that Lottie said, and the description was put in the game as a joke by AK. Uh, that is what I heard anyway. I that rings like that rings true. Um, I'm trying to remember. Would that have been skeleton songs you might have heard that from? If you don't mind, I'm going to take a quick second to gnaw away at a pair. One of the ones that delights me is the origin of Franklin Bancroft, where I believe the story goes that they uh, they were joking and saying, um, you know, what if you had an adept who, um, you know, was very good at what they did, but they did it for very... Um, very trivial and silly things, which is a concept I am extremely sympathetic to. <laughs> um, I don't have many of uh, Bancroft's other virtues, but I, I do feel that this would be an accurate reflection of <laughs> most most of uh, most people's opinions of of me. But um, the um, but yeah, apparently that and Faust. Um, would be to because there's a little bit of uh, trivia that that sort of Faust has uh, has the spirits uh, run off to as well. I believe that is the origin of the notorious gentleman. Uh, okay, this is encouraging. The Motley Tower. Um, so five heart, which we know we can do, or uh, five moth, which is not a piece of cake, but I mean we already have the two tryst, um, so we could potentially just wait for the the barber at that point. Um, yeah, I think we'll just let the rest of the evening run, though, so we'll keep the foresight. Um, there was another story. Oh, yes, uh, the Snoodle Jar is another contribution. By Actually, I should mention, um, while the, the uh, creative lead at Weather Factory is Alexis Kennedy, uh, I should mention that Lottie um, has actually done writing in, for the game. So the I believe the romances for um, the Dancer DLC were her work. 
Um, so obviously the stories of like Bancroft and, and the key and all of that are fun, but um, it's it's not actually just like sort of one liners or, or little stories like this. There are there there is are some substantial portions of the game that have been uh, the result of, of some specific work that she's she's done. So, again, a maddeningly talented team uh, by this. But um, there you go. OK, so uh, we have a few things that I want to get through. Number one would definitely be the. Um, uh, to read Ambrosial, um, but let's see what the weather brings before I go too far. We're also getting ready for winter, so... Okay, sunny day. Um, unless I can do something with the sky, I think it's fair to say... Well, traveling at night. I mean, we do have two sky now. I could risk it. Um... Well, let's give it a shot. So, um, traveling at night, volume two, we'll take this sunny day. So, bell. Oh, but then I wouldn't be able to use the Vins. Uh, eh. Let's try it. So, this is uh, not a bad excuse to just sort of show how this works anyway. So, perhaps, sky dissonance, perhaps you've provided sky, but not enough to match mystery sky. If you are lucky, you might still succeed. So uh, there's a specific way in which you can get lucky, which we're going to see in just a moment. So we'll do fixing and mending here. There's not much work on offer in Brand Crude, but I can find sixpence worth of odd jobs or add coin to find visitors seeking employment. We're also going to use the shaft to bring Denzel in. I'm always welcome at Denzel Smithy. Denzel will offer help for free as a friend. If you give him a gold coinage, he will perform the service of division. And finally, we will draw up some water. So lower the bucket creaking into the dark. There's a specific order in, uh, in which I'm going to do all of this. So we've got the foresight now, so we will take uh, Ambrose's desk. Right, sorry, I was going to try, um, try this first. Speak to Denzel, he might even reply. Now, one of the nice things that I can do here, um, when you have a bed in this game, so you can take a fatigued uh, element of the soul, I could settle in for a nap with a cup of something warming or a glass of something soothing. So in this case, I can use the aisle water. Now, that's not the only thing that you can use. If it has restorative, then you can apply it. So you can use a basket of clean linen. You can use Dawnline coffee, Rust Dragon whiskey. There's a number of things that count as restorative. But in this case, we'll use the glass of water. A quick nap in a warm bed with something comforting to drink while the winds chase the clouds and the clouds chase the sun. Oh, I just saw a notification here that I've just reconnected to chat. So if anybody had any uh, comments after Whisperfire's um, story about uh, the, um, the key, please feel free to just say that in chat again. I apologize. I do know occasionally this happens on, uh, on the Steam streams. Okay, we're going to keep talking with Denzel. I don't think we're at a point where we can uh, go through the Motley Tower again, but I don't mind sort of uh, charging up my memories. Okay, that sounds good. Usually it is, um, but I figure it's always nice to check in uh, just in case because you never want, again, you never want uh, that one person who had a sincere question to feel left out. I know I am sort of rushing through a few things. Okay, so this storm is helpful here. Um, I, in fact, might even try and use the health. Okay, so weather. Now, I can't really use any weather at this point, um, but I can use a memory. Oh, so the storm actually helps me out here. So, again, I rushed through this a little bit, but you get three draws. So, in this case here, I'm one short, and it's going to say, okay, you can add a weather card as long as it has the weather aspect. And then the next two, it's going to say you can use a memory. Well, in this case here, this storm happens to have the sky, so I've successfully read this book, even though I didn't have the aspects that I needed. So there is still a chance. A little water splashes on the stones of the well to nourish the mosses there. So this is really just replacing the water that I already used. I may um, 
I may try and bring it back. All right, I deserved a little quiet time. So I think probably for the shaft, I'm going to... Um, hmm, looks like my chat is actually starting to go a little haywire. I'll do my best to answer any questions, but if, um, I, I think it's dumb if I just like keep asking people, Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, but just maybe feel, um, please don't feel bad if I'm delayed in responding to something I'm getting just, when I look at steam, it gives me some information in terms of kind of the, the quality of the connection and so on and so forth. Um, and I've noticed that it's sort of been blinking on and off and I've been getting a lot of reconnect to chat messages. So um, that's uh, that's just what's going on. So I apologize for that, but um, we'll do our best. Okay, we're cataloging. Traveling at Night, Volume 2, The Annotated Dream Journals of Christopher Lopoli, sometimes called the only readable occultist, literate, entertaining, bewildering. There is an extensive discussion on the, of the comparisons between Elopoli's own dreams and those of the Emperor Elagablus, who Elopoli regards as a dupe or avatar of the sun in rags. The white is west of the world, Elopoli remarks, and winter does not wait forever. Elagablus found his way to the white door at last. Thankfully, speech can't pass the white door, and honestly, Elagablus never had anything very interesting to say. I tried to follow in his footsteps, but I never learned enough of the white. I suppose I'm thankful for that, too. But here's what I do know. So we get solace for that, and we can use sights and sensations, which is a new skill for me. So, But we will find a place to put the solace. I think I might just put that with the storm for now, or close to it. In terms of aspects, the count of, or like the the specific aspects are the same as a storm. Storm is a slight intensity; it's a uh, increased intensity, so it's a total of four between the heart and the sky. But the solace would be uh, two heart, one sky, so three versus four. But when you're leveling things up, you don't actually really care about the intensity of the aspects; you just care about the existence. So uh, let's add sights and sensations, use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And I think we are ready to read Embro, nope, because I'm too busy cataloging a Dawn period book. Better now. Fixing and mending. There's not much work on offer in Brand Crude, but I can find six pence worth of odd jobs or add coin to find visitors, unusual visitors seeking employment. The Road to Janus. So this is another VAC text, not something that I can read right away. Um, oh, let's take the Admonitory Automata project. So we're going to put that in the on the shelf for film. That's a little more organized. Okay, finally, at last, Ambrose's desk. Bells and braseries. If I want, I can make better black salts. Ambrosial. Foresight. And spanners. Forge the kindled flame. I can master this mystery. I'm also tempted to use the solace with Denzil to open up the first floor um, tomorrow as well. I think it's a little early for... Uh, yeah, um, I don't think we can do that today, but... Sights and sensations. To mix the rarest colors, a merciless detachment is required. So this gives me two sky and one winter. Again, nothing new um, for my, my particular set of skills, but still nice to know that I have it. A lot of this will become relevant once I start leveling them up past level two, because I'm going to want to start committing them to the Tree of Wisdoms. But right now I'm really just trying to build out my skills rather than... Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to 
Oh no, we can probably make some money out of this. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. And again, I don't really expect too much from Denzel at this point, but we'll see what memories we can get. We'll probably hang on to the solace so that I can open up the Motley Tower. But we'll see how the day goes. Okay, Ambrosial. Ambrose Westcott's inventive, one might say pioneering or indeed buccaneering, essays into kitchen craft. Westcott proudly announces his intention to transform cuisine to become an engine of alchemy, a fount of war. Westcott compares the ferocity of fire with the intensity of appetite as, in essence, one essence. A fire's ability to transform and destroy grows when it is offered the correct fuel. So too, he implies, can a sufficiently inspired appetite allow its possessor to consume greatly, strangely, unwisely. Oh, two spices and savors. We've gone mad with power. So that's good that I restored that shaft because we'll be able to do both. Oops, I forgot to... So that should be an impulse. So we'll first get spices and savers. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms. There is no sacrifice without sustenance. And now we can take the impulse. We combine that with spices and savers and our shopped. Uh, not required for cooking, but it can. So it's specifically the spicing. So tool or knowledge that might be used to add more exotic savers. So you can use that or you can use the spice scales uh, as part of cooking. Okay, so I think I've settled on using the Solace to open up another room tomorrow. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. And I believe we are going to be moving on to winter tomorrow. Now the other thing that's nice about Spices and Savers here, it's a little unfortunate that this is happening uh, so close to winter. Um, but we've got a fairly high amount of nectar now, and it's something that we can use to actually do some gardening as well. Um, but again, one thing at a time. I'm going to start by using the shop to bring Mr. by to bring Denzel in. Uh, hail. Okay, so that gives us quite a bit of edge and sky. We may want to think about that. And there's winter. Denzel rarely works for free, but he won't take payment for helping a friend. I've carried a memory like a flambeau through the mazes of night. This will complete once dawn has come. And an invitation from TRN Limited. I have received a short catalog, neatly pressed on paper of creamy smoothness from TRN Limited. A compliment slip advises me that they have reserved a space for me in their client list. So this is, again, Whisperfire, I think it's pretty clear to you um, now, but essentially this is the companion to Cater and Hero. So in addition to just simply waiting uh, to get these order forms, when you, um, uh, when you use it and you get your order in, because it takes a couple of days to come in, uh, but essentially once you get the order form in, you will... Um, you'll get a um, you'll get another one back. So essentially, you just need to wait for those forms to come, and then you can sort of order in whatever you want. And it's actually not bad that it does it that way because you can sort of decide uh, how much money you want to set aside, how much you want to dedicate to acquiring new things. Definitely for the kicking, uh, cooking mechanics, I feel like you want to make use of Cater and Hero and TRN. Um, but there are a couple of things that you can get just by naturally doing your. Um, your actions. And we'll get there fairly soon. It's just that I don't have that many addresses in my book yet for the salon. So, and the ones that I do have are a little tricky to, um, to reach out to. So right now it's not bad for me to just develop my skills. And then, um, once we, uh, once we're a little bit better equipped, I'll be able to do the salon and, um, and we can see a few more of, uh, a few more of those, those details. 
I'm just gonna munch a little bit on my fruit again. Okay, so <clears throat> it's probably too optimistic to think that I can do anything with the Book of Thrones. Uh, with Ragged Cross... So let's just keep uh, keep some perspective here. With the Ragged Cross... And again, I'm sorry, I don't like uh, streaming with a mouthful, but I do, I do actually want to be alive by the end of the stream. So um, with something like Ragged Crossroads, we can add hail to that and get seven. We can add a metal to that to get eight. We could add the knife to that to get nine. Um, okay, sorry. Um, so metal one, hail uh, is four. Ragged crossroads brings us to eight. Um, knife brings us to nine. Yeah, so that's, that's basically it. So I should be looking for basically eight edge texts. Um, so that's not the best use of uh, the hail. Now the next item would be, it's like, okay, well, do we have any sky texts? Um, and we do actually have, so we've got Sunset Celia and the End of Days. We're kind of back to the same problem there, right? We've got Bells and Brasieries, uh, Sights and Sensations. Both of those give me two sky. We can get that up to five. Astrolabe will bring us up to six. But we're definitely not at a point where I can I can do anything major with the sky. Um, and you can kind of make similar arguments in terms of um, the uh, in terms of the various rooms. The one other factor that has changed in terms of the calculation is I can hire a fisherman. So fishermen offer moon and a little sky. So technically, I can boost that up by one. So similar argument, right? We've got one sky. We add uh, the hail, which brings us up to four. We add the astrolabe, which brings us up to five. Um, and then theoretically, we can try and mess around a little bit with the various, um, you know, some various drinks and things like that. But um, I don't know, like, I feel like giving up something like the hail in order to be able to, or sorry, uh, well, actually, sorry, for something like the web snared room, hmm, we might want to try and use this to open up a... Hmm. Um, I'm changing my mind about this, to be honest. So the easiest answer is I talk to Denzel about the hail, get him to open up the gloomy room. Then we talk to Denzel again, and we use him to open up the motley tower, which keeps us from being able to uh, do too much in terms of cataloging books. But I feel like it does get quite a bit done. And more importantly, it frees up my conversation for uh, being able to talk to the next visitor. So you know what? Made my decision. Let's have a chat about hail. Let's restore the shot. It is winter and the storms have tightened the seas. I am sitting before the fire in the sweet bones with a beef and potato pasty in one hand and a hot ale posset in the other. Let's take advantage of the weather while it lasts. The gloomy room. The window of this room is coated thickly with black paint. A little light seeps through. Otherwise, the room is dark. Very faintly, I can still smell rotting meat. Uh, now we can talk to Denzel again right away. Now... I guess the other thing I can do, I am starting to generate a little bit of a, a list of, um, of unused cards. So I think at this point, I can probably justify um, 
using the occult scrap. Oops. But I'm going to need the right combination to do it. Okay, well, I'll simplify then. So let's take uh, advice and containment. We'll add the occult scrap. And then not surgeries and exsanguinate. Well, maybe surgeries and exsanguinations. I feel like we should do better. Interesting. Okay, so I do actually need to use a shaft for that. Um, shame on me. So, um, I don't have a whole lot to do for the Trist right now. So it's a little risky to do this, but I am going to try and use the Uncatalog, uh, Catalog the Dawn Period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's Dawn Period, sometime before the end of the first millennium commonly reckoned. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Books from this period are sometimes contaminated. So this is probably the strongest, um, strongest statement in terms of contamination. Okay, so for Denzel, we were going to talk to him about the solace and my health. So I'm ready to lend my limbs. Oh my, Magister Hokebald, metallurgist, gourmet, corrupted immortal, and supposedly long ago a king's byblow, a long ago king's byblow. So he knows Aramaic, Frisian, uh, he consumes forge food and drink, he knows deep mandaic, and he is interested in forge and grail. Better now. All right, so let's get reading. Knock a gate flung wide. I am a match for this book, enough knock to match mystery knock. Now there is something satisfying about leaving Magister Hokebald waiting. So. so here's a question for those of you that like to participate in chat. How many of you have found the secret letters in the game? Because there is a secret letter that has uh, Hokebald. Okay, let's talk about Solace. Two nocturnal period books for us to study. I haven't found it. Okay, I'm tempted to read it, but... I think right now I will use my metal to catalog the last dawn period book. The examination room. Hendrik de Wolf evicted the family of the healer Natan from the barber's tower, as it was then called. I have rooted out the barber's brood, he is recorded to have gloated. But his great-grandson Gideon, the motley baron, for his brindled hair, restored the tower and made it a place of healing again. Of course, the equipment in this room dates from the current century, but Gideon's other nickname was the Cutter. It was rumored that he brought corpses for dissection, even that he was a vivisectionist. The latter was probably a slander, but one way or another, scholars have been cutting up corpses in here for a very long time. So we have a necropsy table, a hygienic place for scrupulous examination of whatever might remain. Morgue boots, reliable rubber, a bucket of seawater, flecks of foam float on the surface. Serpentinite slab, the gray-green root rock of the Cornish coast. Phosphorescent scrapings rendered inert, but still luminous. Essential periost, what happens when you boil and scrape us down to our utter fundamentals. A heart in a jar, an offering or an exhibit. And the grand ascent, the third floor, so if we can bring four forge, we can open up that uh, grand ascent. That shouldn't be too hard for us, but we do have other priorities right now. All right, let's keep going. So I'm going to use the kitchen bowls now. I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. And I figure we can also pour a glass of water, pour out, pour it out. We'll just get aside one of those. Uh, 
and I've been ignoring the sweet bones. Shame on me. It is winter and the storms have tightened the seas. I am sitting before the fire and the sweet bones with a beef and potato pasty in one hand and a hot ale posset in the other. The messenger awaiting her destination, Delimian Burzgash, records his prophecies of a city unbuilt and entreaties to its herald. So I think I'm out of... So let's take the deep man diet. So I think I'm going to have to divide these by language at this point. So this is the vac pile. This is the fusine pile. Oh. All right, I guess this is the Mandaic pile. On we go. Um, not much for me to do with consider right now, so I'll just leave it be. Oh, there is one th uh, thing that I can do. I can add Arthur Moore's card. Note Arthur Moore's address. Well, they come when you do call for them. So for that, we now have three addresses. Or I can just mouse over here. So Serena's address, Cecile Hotel at Alexandria. Fraser's address, Strathcoin House, Midsummer Norton. And Arthur Moore's address, Care of the Endeavor Club, Park Place, London. So three lantern, five scale, uh, and or three forge. So most of these are people that I would be able to, to reach out to. All right. So we should be at four now. So we'll talk with him, give him the glass of water. I can offer my assistant something to drink. This will decrease, uh, increase their aspects. They'll also be glad of the refreshment. And I don't think I can afford to bring Denzel back um, right now. So I think I'm going to farm him for some uh, memories. Just in prep for tomorrow. We'll still help Magister Hokebald, but... Advice on containment. Thirza Blake discusses ways to keep wood things out of trouble and Mansus things in it. Thirza is irritatingly light on specifics, insisting above all that the duties of an adept are the duties of a host, and that a conjured spirit should be kept in as luxurious a vessel as possible. Thirza notes the similarities between the lantern-long habit of scrining, returning to the physical world despite their absence of a body, by entering a mirror or light and Pomander's techniques for confining Mansus long to mirrors. She wonders whether Pomander himself might be lured to visit Hush House if provided with a, suffi a sufficiently alluring scrine. So this gives us a pattern. This is actually quite a good, um, this is quite a good one for us because it gives us two knock. Uh, you have a con uh, so this is not a bad question, Whisperfire is asking. So you have a contaminated book in the telescope room. Will that do anything uh, with the Deep Mandaic book? So far as I can tell, no. Actually, now that I've got the... Ooh, I probably shouldn't be keeping that in my pocket. But I actually usually put the infested books in my... Um, in my... Uh, uh, in the infirmary anyway. Um, but I believe it is normally... So I'm not 100% sure if... Uh, if these things can transfer and if they do how they transfer um, but being in the same room doesn't seem to have affected it um, I always assumed that it was if it was two things were beside each other but I'll be honest with you I, I can't actually answer that with any accuracy I've never I don't think I've had a curse transfer by proximity I think it's usually been I'm assuming it would be through uh, having an afflicted element of the soul Although maybe I haven't inflict, uh, afflicted a book in the first place. All right, I'm going to take a look at the sweet bones and see where we're at there. We'll add glass blowing and vessel crafting to my list of skills. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. We may just hang on to the pattern here um, because we might be able to do something interesting. Do I have any other knock mysteries, I suppose? Um, nothing substantial right now. So the pattern's maybe not as interesting as I thought it could be. Still, I feel like we're making enough progress that we probably want to see if maybe a few of these other books are... So I feel at the very least we should be able to complete the honey book. Better now. 
I'm going to restore one more, but one of the shaft is going to be for cataloging, and then the other one is going to be for money. So we'll take the shaft here. I might as well catalog the film. So This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's nocturnal period after the turn of the century. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. It does a lot with silence, this man. Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms. We are all vessels. Let us contain only what will grace us when the light shines through. Here's a Blake. So two knock and one sky. Not bad because the other knock skills that we have only have one, um, but uh, it's not something that's going to make the difference in terms of the different books that we can read um, today. An Exorcist's Field Manual. That's a six moon text. So I think with Rhyme and Remembrance, we might have a fighting chance with this one. Um, so the Trist would bring me to three. We're actually one short right now. While I'm at it, we should probably take the Orchid Transfigurations. That's really embarrassing that I'm not able to read this one, by the way. But Okay. And in nine seconds, we'll take care of Magister Hokebald. What a grim and chilly little country. I hope you've prepared a suitable welcome. You are aware that the king is at... Uh, sorry. You are aware what the king is at. I suppose it will do well enough. Try a book to match uh, Mystery Forge. Uh, as much Mystery Forge as their Forge interest. Now, I do actually want to make sure that I... Well, no, I obviously have a Forge book. I don't know why I would have thought otherwise. However, I think Ambrosial is the... No, Vinzant's Minglings. Okay, no, that'll that'll handle it. I have a general idea of what the royal endeavor entails, of course, but I would like to refresh my understanding of a few minor details. Yes, this has been quite satisfactory, especially considering the sad state of affairs which persists in this house. I make no complaint. Good day. All right, let's get uh, Denzel opening up the first floor of the Motley Tower. The door jams half open, but the room above is a bright oasis after the dreary neglect of the lower tower. The previous occupant has probably left some sort of protections in place. I'll find somebody suitably qualified to deal with them. <laughs> Hokeball? I think what I'll do is I'll bring up the text. We'll, we'll have a little intermission after the next break. And I'll read, uh, I'll read one of Hokeball's letters. Or maybe I'll read the letter before we go on the break. Um, we were going to use this to make money. There's not much on work. Uh, sorry, not much work on offering brand crew, but I can find sixpence worth of odd jobs or add coin to find visitors seeking employment. Okay, so shape and smoke. I would normally want the foresight for that. So I think I'm going to settle for the pattern just because I don't have. Well, okay, then there's the edge. Um, Denzel with two, um, metal with one. No, I should keep the fear in this case. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. Okay. So we'll do a summary of the affair of the royal endeavor. The new king has sanctioned the use of the crown's wealth to fund a visionary new industrial project, one that will transform our economy and furnish the kingdom with a sense of patriotic mission. Parliament dazzled has already passed the Royal Endeavor Act, mandating the construction of the necessary facilities, although the details remain in some respects vague. So we have Strathcoin. The procurement committee of the Royal Endeavor was, it seems, one of, of Fraser Strathcoin's many clients. And so he came to Hush House to research their requests. Battleships, aerostats, locomotives. What do all these things have in common, librarian? I'll tell you. Names. Arthur Moore. Lieutenant Moore was concerned about his great nephew's part in the Royal Endeavor, but a visit to Hush House soothed those concerns. 
And Hokebald, Magister Hokebald, came to Hush House to learn what he could of the royal endeavor's aims and nature. He seemed satisfied with the endeavor. He seemed almost satisfied with Hush House. And here we go, more books, just in time. Motley Tower, Elopoli's Nook. Christopher Elopoli, poet, painter, archivist, ruiner of seances, stayed on for a while at Hush House after the Great War. The librarian, Serena Blackwood, arranged rooms for Elopoli in the Motley Tower, ostensibly so he could help with the collection, but perhaps also because she saw a potential ally against gov the governor of the Cucurbit. Relations between the Cucurbit and the house were badly strained at the time. So there's quite a few items inside here. There's also Fraser Strathcoin. Uh, but I did want to try and get a break in. So here's what I'm going to do uh, just to change it up a little bit. We are almost in our ninth hour of the stream. Uh, there are some secret files in the game. It's not that hard to find them, um, but there's, there's a couple of secrets that I've deliberately skipped over in the, um, in the game, just because for some people they're sort of fun to, uh, to find on their own. Um, but what I will do here, there is a, um, let's just bring this up here. Now, some of these letters have actually been ones that, um, that have appeared in other releases from, um, Weather Factory already. Um, but I will show you profit and loss. I have a lot of fun reading this one. All right, this is gonna take some effort on my part. I don't think I'm gonna be able to see chat while I do this. Seventeen twenty-two, uh, profit and loss. Palazzo Dario, Venice, fifteenth October, seventeen twenty-two. Madam. I regret the intemperancy of what must follow, but I write in haste and full wrath. Even now my sleeves are beset with slither slime. You permitted me to bear away from your library that noble book, The History of Inks, for which I have averred and still aver my gratitude. But, madam, you have behaved in a manner inconsonant with pro professional care. Madam, to the point, I provided myself a sacred precinct to mix the fifth ink. I set certain protections about the place. I had no wish to be interrupted by robbers or rivals. One of my prominence and noble stature suffers grievously from the envy of lesser practitioners. You must know, madam, that I am an adept of wit and skill, and that these protections were mighty in scope and extent. I warded against worm and storm and bite and sight and the eight principles and the four hundred names. But, madam, I warded not against the pettiest and the meanest. When one takes a lease upon a palace, one expects to bring one's own guards and retainers to defend against uninvited ill-wishers. But one does not expect to deploy ratting cats and mousing terriers for defense against the rodentry. That, madam, is a given. So, madam, I had assumed that as a competent preserver of knowledge, you would place a ward salutiferous to protect against such vermin as rob prophets. Madam, I have taken the necessary time to compose myself, and I will tell the rest but briefly. The raw prophet was drawn to the history of the inks by what I do not know. Even as I turned to fill the calcin, it fell upon the book, and by the time I had turned back, the book was all but engulfed. I strove mightily against the raw prophet with the strength, the great strength, of my arms. But raw prophets are flexile and indelicate creatures, and I won only slime and besmirchment and intimate assault at no small cost to my dignity. Therefore, madam, I do now insist and demand that first you abandon all claims upon the history of inks. The book is gone. I do not wish to inquire exactly where, but I imagine within the doings of the raw prophet. Second, that you compensate me for your incompetence. A gift of the second volume of the unexpurgated Deoris will, I suppose, suffice. Thirdly, that you compensate me for the cleansing of my garments. I attach the bill in full. Yours in honor, Hokebald of Posend. 
Uh, and there's a further note here, a note on the letter reads, fine takers dispatched against Magister Hochebald in case of non-payment seek full compensatory redress from society obliviate. This is one of several um, uh, letters that are available in the secret archive. If people want to know where to get it, um, I'm, I'm happy to tell them, but uh, there are a few um, there are a few secrets uh, within within the game, and uh, that's one of the ones that you can find inside of the files. Uh, so there you go. That was Hokebald writing to I think Serena Blackwood, but all right, Madam. Uh, I'm a little early for taking a break, but I think it would be good for me to get a little bit of a stretch and just refill my water and my tea and such. For those of you who've been here since the start or have been watching for a long time, now would maybe be a good time for you to take care of yourself as well. Uh, I'm going to try and make this a little bit of a shorter one, but I do have a bit I need to catch up on. I also figure maybe I can just finish a couple of the snacks that I've been um, eating as well. So I'll try and keep it just a couple of minutes. Um, but we do want to make some more progress on the game, and uh, I'm also quite eager to show you a few more of the features of the new ex expansion. So I will see you all in a little bit. Uh, take care until then.
Okay, thank you everybody for your patience. <clears throat> it took a little longer than expected, but I've got a new tea. I've got um, a sandwich we eaten. We should be good for a little bit longer. And where were we? It would help if I got rid of this sign, first of all. All right, um, so, and I think I forgot to do one other thing. Um, okay. Still have power? Hurricane's in full swing. You wonder how long the power will last. <laughs> well, good luck to you, Whisper Fire. It's been nice to have you in chat to chat uh, to speak with those. So. Um, So let's see what we can get done here. So we'll have to cross over into the next day, first of all. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So as always, we want to try and figure out what we want to do for the day. Um, it's six heart and six moth, so that's not immediately obvious in terms of how I get that done. But I think with the Grand Ascent, I should at least be able to get Denzil uh, ready to go. So let's take... Yeah, we'll use our health on this one. Uh, I'm always welcome at Denzil's Smithy. Uh, sorry, you pretend that you have a brain cell or two. Truthfully, you recently took an IQ test and the result came back negative. <laughs> I don't even want to know what the result <laughs> would be. The, the right people think I am mildly clever, and so there's absolutely no benefit to me uh, confirming that fact. <laughs> It's, it's only if people think I'm dumb that I need to do the test. All right, I've carried the memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. How on earth does one obtain skills in this game? Um, so, um, a few ways. Uh, Selfea, but it's um, the, I'll, I'll give you the main one, and it's um, it's gonna sound. So the, sorry. The the reason why I'm saying it this way is that um, it's going to be it's gonna sound annoying. Um, what I suggest, but I, I assure you that it can. I assure you that it can happen. So um, you get skills from lessons in this game. So every single skill that I've gotten comes from a lesson. And you get lessons by reading books. So in this case here, I'll give you an example. We've got a shape and smoke, which will give us the pyroglyphics um, lesson. But to read that, I need, excuse me, uh, eight. Um, I need eight of the forge aspect to be able to read this. Or at the very least, I need close to eight. And then I need to get a little lucky with the rolls that happens afterwards. And I imagine that this might be the thing that you're having a little trouble with, which is uh, it's all well and good to have a whole bunch of books, but if they're a high level, then you can't really get the lessons, which means you can't get the skills. So um, I will actually get a lesson out of one of these books before too long. But I guess the question I'd first ask for you, Xelfea, is are you able to get lessons from books? Uh, is the question specifically, I don't know how to, well, I have lessons and I don't know how to turn them into skills? Or is it more, I understand that I need lessons, but I don't have any books that will let me get uh, lessons. Hello, madam, how are you doing? Um, so I mentioned uh, Sophia was here a little bit earlier. Actually, so today is the first day that Sophia is playing um, Book of Hours and hopefully uh, she will be streaming. So that is a wonderful Twitch streamer. And on top of that, we have got Prosciutto Fist in the chat, and I will actually let you know. So Prosciutto Fist has done a number of games, including the other RPG that starts with B that came out the same year as this, Baldur's Gate 3 or something along those lines. 
Um, but I think uh, she was going to use House of Light as an excuse to uh, resume her journey in Hush House, whether she starts a new playthrough or whether she's continuing her old one. So uh, again, I don't want to speak for Selfea in terms of what she might be streaming, but I can definitely tell you that Prosciutto Fist is somebody who will be uh, doing some more Book of Hours. So for those of you looking for some content creators who do cover this game, uh, please do feel free to check them out. And they're, I believe both of their names are the same as uh, as in the Steam chat. So uh, you've not watched enough of the YouTube video. The game seems like it will be fun, but it does not teach you how to play it. Well, de definitely pay attention to the um, <clears throat> the opening steps of the game. You're right that it doesn't explicitly give you a, a full tutorial. Um, but the thing to remember about this game is that your process of going from St. Brendan's Cove to opening the first rooms of Hush House, that is actually the tutorial for the game. So what it's doing is it's giving you an idea of what sort of your opening moves are. But you are sort of left to figure out the details in terms of how you interact those things to create some progress inside of the game. Uh, so to answer your question, you have considered two books, but you didn't realize that you uh, also had to read them. Rather, I assumed that I was reading them, so there's that. Okay, yes. So uh, this will hopefully be helpful for you. So probably what happened here is you had an uncatalogued book. So, and this has got the uncatalogued state here. So there's nothing as safe as ignorance or as dangerous near a wolf. And then when you catalog the book, uh, you find out what it is. Um, so in this case, I've sort of put a few in different places. These are ones that I've read. So in this case, I've master, mastered the winter mystery, whereas these ones I've not yet mastered the mystery inside of them. So these are the ones that come up after I have uh, considered them. But you do need to catalog a book before you, um, before you read it. And definitely feel free to keep asking questions like this. Sophia, because I imagine that there are probably a few people here who have similar questions and either they can't type them uh, or they don't want to type them. So this sort of stuff is good. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of like the fact that I get to figure things out, but it's a very different change of pace for a lot of games. So I don't want to assume that everybody happens to enjoy that style of play. Okay. I'm going to catalog another book. Hmm. Gale. Sound familiar, Prosciutto Fist? Hmm. <laughs> Well, I can remember when I was a TA, I always liked it when um, a student would raise their hand and ask the question, because I knew everybody else was thinking the question, just nobody asked. <laughs> um, okay, so I was originally going to try and use the Grand Ascent, but maybe something heart-oriented would be more appropriate. So if we have the Gale... Um, Gale gives me three, Heart would give me four, Kitchen Bowls would give me five, Water would give me six, and then that means I can either open the Web Snared Room, the Reeking Chamber, or the Wreck Pantry. Uh, let's skip the Wreck pan well, Wreck Pantry, we need another Heart anyway, but the Web Snared Room actually makes a lot of sense because there's a useful tool inside of this. So, let's restore the health. Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal and a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. It is winter and the storms have tightened the seas. I am sitting before the fire in the sweet bones with a beef and potato pasty in one hand and a hot ale posset in the other. So here we'll add the fear. I can discuss some memory with my assistant. You, uh, this will use up the memory, but boost the assistant's abilities for the rest of the day. So I will get to cataloging these when I can. Um, and it'd be kind of nice to open up the uh, the 
second floor here as well, but I think I'm still going to prioritize this one. Ooh, Glimmerings. An anonymous prison diary written by a dreamer convicted of oniric irresponsibility and confined to the cooker bit. Okay, this is going to have to be my overflow. And the locksmith's dream, Portions and Proportions. The second volume of Teresa Galmier's examination of the parallels in mystic, the mystic dreams of artisans. Frontispiece has been slashed with a razor. So we'll have a couple of examples of generating memories in a little bit, uh, Sylphae, if you hang out. But obviously, if you want to learn that on your own as well, I will not feel offended if you uh, move on with your newfound knowledge. Okay, so we're going to talk with Denzel about the metal here. Inspiration and Determination boosts Forge and Edge. It's always outside on the bridge. Yes. That's the place all the best librarians put it. That's the MLG strats. MLG doesn't even mean anything anymore. All right, our course is fixed, so last step we will give the saw. Eternally useful, though not for most librarians most of the time. I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. You'll still be able to use this tool. All right, rest and refreshments better. Um, let's do another shop. This time I'm going to be making some money with this one. <clears throat> The real place you need to use the um, the bridge, uh, the outside of the bridge, is um, where you put all your extra food. Okay, the Grand Ascent, third floor. Frost crackles on the window panes as I ascend, and the light strikes at my eyes like knives. Another of Van Loren's forbiddings. So from there we will bring in Denzel again. I'm always uh, always welcome at Denzel Smithy. Talk to him about health, gale, kitchen bowls, and we'll give him a glass of water. Better now. So this one is to make money. There's not much work on offer in Brancrude, but I can find sixpence worth of odd jobs. Talk about the weather. More useful than one might expect, especially in Britain. So again, that's going to bring me up to four hearts. The Grand Ascent, the third floor. By long tradition, each Baron Brankrug had their image set in a niche in the Grand Ascent. Later, the Curia of the Isle continued the tradition for their librarians. You've got a potted bamboo, water it, and you can almost hear it growing, and a despoiled laboratory, so for, uh, six forge or six winter. That should be pretty easy for us to open up here. This was an alchemist's workshop and a picture gallery, but the pictures have been flung down, the vessels overturned, the solvents and reagents spilt. It will be time-consuming and dangerous to repair. Why do you feel Denzel doesn't like you, bro? And the shadowed atrium, this has long been a holy place, but in the absence of prayers, other influences have crept in. I'll need to purify it step by step. You know what you really need to give Denzel to make him like you? Cake time! I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. This tool has boosted their aspects appropriately, so we just need one more heart. In this case, we'll get that through the glass of water. I can offer my assistant something to drink. This will uh, increase their aspects. They'll also be glad of the refreshment. And I suppose the question here is, uh, do I want to use this shop to catalog something, or should I just um, speak to Denzel? He might even reply. I think I might just make some money off of this one. So fixing and mending, there's not much work on offer in Brand Crude, but I can find sixpence worth of odd jobs. Excuse me, you yell at him for not being able to talk about books and taking my food. <laughs> Have you ever thought about not being a jerk to Denzel?
night has fallen, dawn will come soon. So I think we've got the foresight already, so we'll probably read a shape in smoke. I'll just double check that we don't get anything special yet. The hindsight doesn't do much for me. So here we will dream on the foresight. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. And here, the web-snared room, the cobwebs here are thick as ivy, clinging to the walls and furniture. Blackfurred bodies rustle stickily. Van Loren was creative here. Many of the spiders are probably only seemings, but the webs are real, and it'll, long be it'll be long and tiresome work clearing away the webs. Oh, <laughs> As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. Okay, so tomorrow we should have some decent uh, decent progress. So um, first thing, uh, Solfe is we'll, uh, we'll actually be learning um, a lesson. So we've got a shape in smoke, Ambrose Westcott's exposition on tobacco blending and the oracles of the pipe. So I need to wait for the uh, foresight to come in, but I'll have that momentarily. <clears throat> and, okay, clouds don't do that much for me, so um, I think what I'm going to do here, we'll draw up some water. I'll bring Denzel back just because he's still good for memories. Speak with Denzel. Denzel rarely works for free, but he won't take payment for helping a friend. An offer from Oriflams. Oriflams, established 1776, Sense Signs Sciences. Dear librarian, we would like to offer you this opportunity to purchase 1,000 threads. This is a five uh, tally. So basically, that would almost take out my, uh, my entire collection of Spintria, and I feel that we need to get the languages more than I need to get a Grail book in Kilisimi that I can't read. <laughs> So we'll pass up uh, Aura Flams again. The Map Room. At the turn of the century, Sir David Green, 8th librarian and former Nocturnal Branch superintendent, had this room refurnished to plan his explorations and to manage the operations of his many agents. So we got a couple of paintings, Carries and A Sacrifice. A vase of Roses. We have got the Vagabond Desk, an elegant relic repurposed by Green for his small and secret war. It's got Catwink. Hallowed Anthropoderm. Yes, it's human skin, but it's not just human skin. And a lunar globe. It's the earth, but silvered like the moon, unlabeled and pocked with craters. And this one is the reason why I opened the room, because this is a tool and it has moon and rose aspects. So it's actually quite helpful in terms of getting, um, getting me over the edge on a couple of books. Okay, I've carried the memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. So, uh, we're talking about uh, getting some skills. So in this case, we've got Ambrose's desk. Ambrose did most of his work downstairs in the foundry and the kitchen, or upstairs in the laboratory, but la that later became the flood gallery. But it was at this desk that he composed the Temptations of Architecture and wrote long cross letters to the Times about the flaws of the British Constitution. So here we are going to read A Shape in Smoke. Ambrose Westcott's work at Ambrose, West, Ambrose Westcott's desk, as is appropriate. So the highest forge that we can apply here, I believe, is Bells and Brasieries. Yep. So we're at seven of eight, but if I bring in the square, I can master this mystery. So it's going to take us a couple of minutes to read the book here, but we know because we have got a the, the level of aspects, the eight forge is equal to the mystery eight. So I know I'm guaranteed to pass the, that test. Uh, Locksmith's dream portions and proportions. I think if I, I think I need bells and braceries for that as well. Um, I'll maybe leave the tryst aside and then we'll take the shaft. Tricky. Uh, I am going to catalog a book with the shaft, I think. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's nocturnal period. 
uh, after the turn of the century. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Books from this period are almost never contaminated. Denzel the blacksmith will lend me his strength for the day. Make use of the blacksmith's help before dawn. So we'll restore the shaft here. It is winter and the storms have tightened the seas. I am sitting before the fire in the sweet bones with a beef and potato pasty in one hand and a hot ale posset in the other. And here we're going to chat with Denzel. I want to just double check that I didn't have... Yeah, so I think if I can get the metal back, I would maybe use Denzel here. But I don't think it's worth the effort. I think I'm just going to use him for memories. Speak to Denzel. He might even reply. I think the focus is definitely going to be on the rooms and maybe a little bit of cataloging today. We'll ignore Oriflam's and uh... Ooh, another cursed work. So this has got Chaonic Theoplasma. This book has suffered the attention of one of the chilly names or ours, perhaps even a god from nowhere. This contamination can affect your tryst and health and spread to nearby objects. You can remove it with a skill that's effective against theoplasmic contamination and at least seven heart. We'll just let that stay on its own. Okay, stolen secrets nice for the knock stuff, but I think we've used up all the knock. I don't know. Um, I'm still going to turn this into money. <laughs> Send that to the bridge immediately. That's what the infirmary's for. Okay, I'm actually kind of tempted to talk to Denzel about this foresight, but maybe it makes more sense for me to use this overnight, seeing as I'm gonna my metal's already going to be used up. A little water splashes onto the stones of the well to nourish the mosses there. Okay, so we finished reading the book. So we've got A Shape in Smoke, Ambrose Westcott's exposition on tobacco blending, The Oracles of the Pipe. The text is spotted with sparkles throughout. Westcott observes gnomically that a pipe might be said to manifest the red flower of the watchman's tree, for when lies are burnt, wisdom arises, and vice versa. So this has given me pyroglyphics and revelation. So I think that's our first revelation text. Uh, let's put that... that over there. <clears throat> uh, so to answer the question of how you get skills, so first of all, we cataloged the book before. Um, so cataloging the book gives you the um, gives you an idea of its contents. So because this was an eight mystery book, we needed to first of all get eight, um, eight of the aspect by whatever means we had available to us. And it gave us two lessons. So because I don't have pyroglyphics, I can consider the lesson pyroglyphics. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. I'll read that. So I know I'm going to have to use my shaft. So why was I hanging on to this tryst? Probably just a catalog. So this book was probably written around the time of Hush House's nocturnal period, after the turn of the century, or was I? One way or another, that's how I'm using this. Okay, as I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So here I'm going to restore the shaft. He does a lot with silence, this man. Now I think there's a realistic chance that I can actually get this 
uh, room open. So I'm going to give him the foresight. I can discuss a memory with my assistant. This will use up the memory, but boost the assistant's abilities for the day. Okay, so because I didn't have pyroglyphics, I just considered the lesson, and now I have it in my inventory. Pyroglyphics, one script that all the world must read, even the blind, and it is written in flames. Matters of fireworks and their kin, lights, colors, infernal detonations. Two forge, one lantern, uh, it also has chandlery, a skill that can be used with suitable ingredients to make candles. The most likely ingredients are beeswax and herbs, but to confound villagers and visitors, leave a meaningful pause before the word suitable. So to follow that instruction, a skill that can be used with suitable ingredients to make candles. So now we've got the pyroglyphic skill. I'm going to show you how you can level that up to uh, level two, because if I try and consider it now, I can't do anything with this on its own. Perhaps I wanted to consider a matching skill so I could increase it. No problem, Prosciutto Fist. Uh, I was happy to, happy to see you stop by, and hopefully there are a few people in chat that will now check out your lovely stream, um, because I was very happy that I caught your stuff uh, through Book of Hours, and I hope you enjoy making all the food in, um, in uh, House of Light. Uh, good question. I don't know, um, because really we've got four of the nine seasons are down for Numa. So, I mean, I guess if I go 18 hours, <laughs> um, we're, we're more or less guaranteed a Numa. A tower rises. The phonograph is packed in glossy card with uh, the bright pink of a dog rose with the words a tower rises in nine languages on both sides. There is no other identifying information at all. Uh, they've given me too much, <laughs> too much vac stuff. I'm not going to lie, I don't fa fancy my chances on getting this uh, metal ready. But... Four of Flams thanks you for your continued interest. This book may become available for purchase again later. Okay, actually I can restore the metal here, so... Um... But the real thing that I wanted to do was level up pyroglyphics. So we take pyroglyphics, we'll now take the lesson. So we need to apply effort, so it's a forge or a lantern skill. So in this case we add the shaft, and then finally we add uh, the memory, which in the, again it's a forge or lantern. In this case we add the revelation, and how much you want to bet I forgot to... Oh no, we're good. So there's always more to learn, and that's how we bring it up to level two. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit of what you were running into, Sylphaea. Uh, but let me know if there were any questions on that, because I know I'm also sort of rushing through a few of these bits, um, just so people can see some of the new stuff. All right. So we just need one more chat with Denzel. So let's talk with him about metal. Inspiration and determination. So that's going to take 30 seconds. No point in doing anything else at the Sweet Bones. We're not going to have enough time to get the element of the soul back. Mind you, we're doing okay for cash as well, so I'm not too, uh, not too worried there. The real question is how I want to spend, like what memory do I want to use? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Well, if you need me to reiterate anything about the lessons, that's fine, because we did just get pyroglyphics in our uh, in our skill set, so our course is fixed. Okay, so the reason why I did this with Denzel is that we've got the option of opening up the Flood Gallery, so we'll use him to open that up. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to get the second floor of the Grand Descent taken care of, but I'm not in a rush. Oh, I should pick a memory. Okay, so Locksmith's Dream, I don't have anything with Sky, so these are equally um, equally irrelevant. Um, 
The Exorcist field, man, man, uh, field Manual may be interesting because if I keep the Stolen Secret, so um, Stolen Secret would give me two moon, Trist would give me three. We've got the Globe, which gives me four. Okay, so what, uh, what do I think the magic's gonna be? Oh, and then we do Rhyme and Remembrance. Yes, so we're keeping the Stolen Secret. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. All right. The Flood Gallery. Thirza Blake, seventh librarian of the house, extended this space, decorating it with semi-precious materials and filling it with the finest art Hush House's money could buy. Of course, after her enthusiasms brought the house to the brink of penury, much of it had to be sold off. So there's a few interesting things here. First of all, a bunch of Curia period books, <clears throat> tons of art. We've got Ava DeWolf. This is the crystal called Scolocyte, the wormstone polished to chill smoothness. We have got the Sacrament Assite. Back in the dawn period, the Sisterhood of the Triple Knot used this in Rites of the Horned Axe. That is a six knock drink. We also have the Sacrament Calisite. Back in the dawn period, the Sisterhood of the Triple Knot used this in the Rites of the Red Grail. Six Grail. The Sacrament Malachite. Back in the dawn period, the Sisterhood of the Triple Knot used this in the Rites of the Ring You, the hour which has also been called the Malachite. Six Nectar. Um, and then the Ruby Wise Ruin. We've run into this before for Grail. But yes, three very powerful, um, three very powerful drinks. Glass Finger Toxin, what is within without, what is without within, a poison sacred to the votaries of the Menescate, to forge for knock, to lantern. Xanthotic Essence, the rich gold of a summer afternoon. If sunlight precedes moonlight, St. Anselm observed, the Menescate must precede the Madrigad, and the light that was lost will remain. Wolf Snow Ampule, far too cold ever to melt in anything but the hottest noonday sun. It will very gradually consume human flesh. More Perinculin. Deadly. Use gloves to read text produced with this pigment. An ink of power, sometimes considered an unsanctioned ink. Serpent-styled glass. This will be a big one for us. Carved snakes writhe down the frame. A prominent inscription reads, To the librarian Gervinus in earnest of our wager. So this is a uh, scale tool. Serpentine. An odorous eraser of errors. Uh, quartz chunk. Ice rock winking light. Solomon's preparation. Ambergris chunk. Never, never, never call it whale vomit. And then this will be a workstation we use quite a bit, the alchemist's glassware, fragile vessels in which new substances are quickened. So I'm not going to use it too much right now, but the alchemist's glassware is just one that in practical terms I wind up using because I do wind up making a lot of drinks for my uh, followers to use. But we have been talking about Ava DeWolf quite a bit, and we know that she was the first and last Baroness. So we'll put her in place there. Okay, the Silvered Snares. The mirrors of this room teem with watchful spirits and perilous reflections. They can be mollified and banished, but only a fool would attempt a solitary exorcism of a room where all the haunts are doubled. So Eight Edge or Eight Winter, unlikely that we'll be working with that anytime soon. We also have the Dim Hall, so Eight Edge or Eight uh, Grail. Again, unlikely we'll work with that one. So most likely rooms for me to open up will be the Reeking Chamber, probably the Wrecked Pantry next summer. And then if I want, I can try something like the Maze Craze Room or the Wounded Room, but I just don't really think it's worth putting too much effort into those, especially when we just have other things we can catalog and such. Okay, let's think about the next steps. So first of all, I should probably move um, an Exorcist's Field Manual over to this shelf. And I think I'm going to wait to see what the weather brings before I commit too much. Okay, we've got the Stolen Secret and Snow. So Snow is normally a helpful one for us just because it gives us quite a bit of sky. So in theory, we might be able to do something with the Reeking Chamber here. Um, I'll take a minute and think again. Alternatively, I can try something with the Winter, but I don't really have um, Wist right now. So, you know, something like Ettery After, uh, if I combine that with Ragged Crossroads, I can get six. 
So if I had a Wist, I would be fine, but I don't have a Wist. So uh, I'm one short. And the question is, do I want to risk... Do I want to risk the one when I already have other books that I can read and potentially another book, another room that I can open up? So if I talk with Denzel about the sky, actually better still, let's talk to the fisherman about the sky. So that will bring me up to, or the snow, so that will bring me up to four. Uh, then we give him the astrolabe, which is five. So then what's the six? Because I don't have an element of the soul. Um... Okay, this is an unconventional sh Oof, yeah, this is gonna be a little painful, but we're gonna gather some blue crown. Gather in winter, few flowers flourish in the depths of winter. Blue crown is one of those few. I'm going to assume that this works. So assistance from, assistance from fishermen. In winter, when the storms close the seas, the fishermen will offer their services for a shilling a day. Uh, while we wait, I'm going to read the book. So for that rhyme and remembrance. And then for that, we will use the lunar globe. So moon, a culmination. I can master this mystery, enough moon to match mystery moon. And then if I want to read the Locksmith Stream, Portions and Proportions, first of all, I need a desk that can use Sky. So we'll use Shop there. Um, is it Bells and Brazier? I guess it is. So why do I think I can read that? Clearly I need one more Sky. I wasn't anticipating that. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave that be then. So, uh, I think the next obvious step is to catalog some books. So I'll use the metal to catalog the Curia period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's nocturnal period after the turn of the century. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Just gonna grab these out of the flood gallery. Fishermen in this part of the world have a reputation as smugglers and worse than smugglers. Those days are past, mostly, and mostly they just catch pilkards now, but they still remember the words spoken in silence to the moon and the sea. I'm gonna do some fixing and mending. So we'll chat with the fishermen about snow. More useful, talk about the weather, more useful than one might expect, especially in Britain. So I'm still shooting for the reeking chamber. It's just changed a little bit in terms of the overall strategy. Okay, the Cucurbit prisoner records, a 12 nectar text. 14, 12, there we go. Uh, accounts by Governor Collar's private secretary of interventions and experiments in the last years of the Cucurbit prison, focusing particularly on prisoners he believed might have Carapace Cross lineage. And the War of the Roads, Willis Ford describes the War of the Roads, an event in a history other than our own in detail, from its beginning as a martial philosophical dispute between the dawn and sunset roads of alchemy to a war which ravaged half of Europe. This is a pretty straightforward one for us to read. We just need the ragged crossroads. The question now is just where we get the um, elements of the soul to read it. Take advantage of the weather while it lasts. So while we're doing this, I will get the uh, Baron Silence Astrolabe. I can lend, excuse me, my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. And I am eager to get my health back. This tool has boosted their aspects appropriately. So we're one short of what we need for the sky. Now, just as a reminder here, right, so I've got a few options in terms of what I can use to boost the uh, fisherman. We can use an element of the soul. We've already used a memory. Uh, we've already used a tool. But 
But if I have a beverage or a sustenance, I would be able to use those to boost uh, their aspects. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So we'll use the shop in this case. Okay, so I have a specific purpose for picking up this blue crown. We should have enough time, but it's going to be a little close. An Exorcist's Field Manual, a practical guide to troublesome dead, grounded in theory but with a clear focus on their disposal by the redoubtable Detective Ostieri Wheelock of the Suppression Bureau. The dead usually avoid light as the most immediate manifestation of eternity, which has no place for death. However, those dead uplifted by gold, that is to say touched by an actinic theoplasma, happily bought about in daylight and are perhaps strongest at noon. If you are dead but uplifted by green, that's the ring use blessing, the crown growth offers a similar but nastier benefit. This is how burgeoning risen come about, uh, but there are different degrees of sentience and freedom depending on which growths are involved. The consciousness of one uplifted by green is always greatly altered, though they never really seem like the same person. They may have dregs of their original souls, but these are often replaced by something else. The upshot, invariably, is that they need to be set firmly on fire. All right, that gets us a contradiction. Contradictions are actually quite helpful because they have two edge, and that lines up well with some of the other things I'm trying to do. Uh, so we will create a new contradiction shelf. And our first Edix Marshall. Edix Marshall is a very, very helpful lesson. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Okay, more gossip. Uh, do I want... Yeah, we'll talk to the fisherman one more time. i got to be careful on the timing, though. Better now. Okay, let's get that health back. I might... Ooh... Timing is going to be very tight for this. Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms. Edicts Marshall, the precepts of struggle and conflict which drive the cosmic engine of change, sometimes called the Corvality. One edge, two moon, and we will see why it's helpful in a little bit. Now, what am I going to do with my shaft? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to leave it be for now. I'm probably going to use it to catalog some books, but we can afford to chat with the fisherman again. Which I suppose with the locksmith's dream... A little late for me to be doing this, but I think this will turn out. All right, better now. So let's take the shot. Restore that. Uh, still chat with the fisherman. But the trick here, so I got some blue crown, and I'm going to do some cooking. So we'll take our health, we will take the blue crown, make blue crown tea, a hot drink with nectar, sky, and winter. So new addition as part of House of Light. I've learned something, or perhaps just remembered it.
All right, Blue Crown Tea, always served cold. More accurate to say, inevitably served cold. So we got to rush to try and make this work, but what I'll do is I will pour a cup of the Blue Crown, pour out. Pour it out. Bridge tea. All right, so now we chat with the fisherman. So this is actually good for two sky, but I just need the one. I can offer my assistant something to drink. This will increase their aspects. They'll also be glad of the refreshment. So we've got a half pot of the blue crown tea. It would not be a bad idea for me to make the most of the blue crown and harvest that over the course of the rest of the winter. But again, we are short on elements of the soul, so it's always a little tricky to find out what I want to use my resources for. All right, The Locksmith's Dream, Portions and Proportions, the second volume of Teresa Galmier's Examination of Parallels in the Mystic Dreams of Artisans. The frontispiece has been slashed with a razor. In this volume, Galmier records fewer dreams and explicates more of her own elaborate theories. We see again and again what is below can't escape what is above. The finest artisans all dream of the white door in the end. I'm no artisan, only a scholar. I think there's a secret that all of these artisans know, but I think that secret is only half the story. So, Confounding Parable, this is quite a good one for us. Uh, so, we'll give it its own shelf. And one of the reasons why I say this is a good one is that the Confounding Parable is something that uh, gives me three different aspects. So, it's either moon, rose, or sky. But equally important. So having lots of different aspects means that you can be used in different workstations, which just means that it's more versatile. The other thing that's an advantage for this is that it's not something that um, it's not something that the assistants can generate through conversation. And so what this means is that being able to talk with one of the uh, with one of the assistants, I know that if I have a confounding parable, they're not going to wind up overwriting it. So. It's just one of these things sometimes when I'm trying to get lots of different memories to try and level up um, some kind of high level skill, um, being able to know what I can reliably use elements of the soul for and some of the ones that I can maybe try and get through chance, being able to just sort of figure out which is which uh, can be helpful. It can make the most of my, uh, my elements of the soul. So I always like having the option of getting a confounding parable when I can. So, uh, we also have clockwork, Clockworks and Clockworks, so use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And we should be getting close to finishing... Yeah, so I mean, the Grail, I'm going to need something for. Letters from a Fugitive, I'm getting a bit closer to being able to do something with Rose, but we still don't actually have a skill for it. Um, I'm a little surprised I can't read Honey, a Comprehensive Guide. So we've got four with my... No, we definitely... Or, no, hang on. Okay, so with Spices and Savers and my Health, I get four. And if I added an Impulse and Cake Balls, excuse me, um, I would be able to read that. That would give us uh, Insects and Nectars. So yeah, I think that's one that I'll add to the to read list. Uh, the key of night, that would take... Um, okay, so one scale from the... One scale from the health. I guess wolf story is my best scale. No, furs and feathers. Well, still, we only have the one, so that's two with the skill. Um, fear would bring us up to four. Yeah, so we could only get to five with what I currently have. So getting a higher scale um, lesson might be a good idea. I'll set that aside for now. Okay, well, I'll live with what I've got. 
and we'll chat one more time with the fisherman just because I've already got what I need. Night has fallen, dawn will come soon. Another leaf on the tree of wisdoms, the little ways of little machines. And we have a regret. Okay, so first things first, let's get the fisherman to open the reeking chamber. The room reeks like a rotting reptile. The curtains ripple restlessly with the watchful presences that Van Loren left behind. Perhaps I can find someone to sing them to sleep. As used to, they used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. All right, um, so the remaining question is, what memory do I want to keep overnight? I think most of them I can keep. I just think the contradictions, the uh, sorry, gossip and contradiction. Actually, there's a few. Um, so the storm probably makes the most sense to keep on its own. Yeah, I don't really have a good reason for it. Just the storm is the one with the high level of um, heart and sky, and those are the ones that I've probably needed to use the most. So the next little bit of, um, the next kind of batch of effort that I'm going to do. So one, uh, if I can finish off these books, so much the better. Uh, I do want to catalog as many of the books because we've it's kind of gotten out of hand again. So we've got two here, five here, so that's seven, three in uh, Elopolis Nook, so that's ten. I think that's it right now. There might Actually, I don't think there's any in this room. But still, uh, something I want to get on top of. Now, I did say that I was going to be uh, ransacking the garden for... Uh, for Blue Crown. So that means that I may have to put the Honey a Comprehensive Guide on hold for a bit. Uh, let's use my Trist to read The War of the Roads. That gives me Menescate Reflections, so I don't need to worry about um, applying any of the memories for that. It would be nice to have somebody to generate memories again, um, but before I do that, let's see what the weather brings. Hail. Okay. So that does complicate things a little bit, seeing as the sky may become viable again. Uh, maybe not, actually. The Mazarine Room, Kitty's pride and the house's joy. Kitty Mazarin was better known for her vocal compositions, but she was a versatile musician, and on winter evenings she'd invite visitors and villagers alike to her recitals. So they've got, uh, I think this is our first batch of instruments. Oh, sorry, I was wrong. There is a piano, a gift from Kitty Mazarin, who would sometimes pop by of an evening to sing, but her successor Solomon, never one for music, disliked the way the notes would drift up the stairs to the reading room and forbade staff to pl play their piano before sunset. So, uh, worth noting here, so we said her predecessor, Solomon. So if Solomon was the third librarian, that must mean that Kitty was the second. This bust is carved from black limestone. I've carried a memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. This will complete once dawn has come. Okay. So, uh, we've got a few things that we can do here. So, uh, first of all, we were talking about the different uh, instruments. So, inside this room, we have got the quivering double bass. The better it gets, the fewer of us know it. Ray Brown. A sunset harp. I have been a string in a harp, disguised for nine years in water and the foam of the sea, the battle of the trees. The harp is strung with something that glimmers redly as waves at sunset. The grand piano, simplicity is the final achievement. After one has played a vast quantity of notes and more notes, it is simplicity that emerges at the, as the crowning reward of art. Friedrich Chopin. 
and the hallowed drums celebrate the god of joy with your own joy. The bake, the skin of these drums was the skin of something rare. These are new. Uh, I'm actually trying to think what they're trying to indicate with those references. All right, the Rose Haunted Hall. This room is rife with climbing roses tangled in the lamps sprawled across the table. The blossoms are a deep, deep red, one of those colors not often seen in waking life, and their perfume makes my head swim. Another of Van Loren's protections or something else. In any case, it'll be arduous, careful work to clear it. All right. So I think the one fair reading of this is that the hail is not as useful as I thought it might be. Really, I'm going to need to use it for um, I'm going to need to use it for its sky or its edge for a book, or I'm not going to use it at all. So it doesn't help the honey. It doesn't help any of these three. I'm actually slightly inclined to say that we ignore the hail, or at the very least, we use it in some other... Actually, there is one thing that I can do. Um... Oh, you know what? I've used up all the elements of the soul that would let us uh, do instrument things. Oopsies. Well, let's give it a shot with bells and braziers. So one of the things that's nice here is we can combine the storm and the hail. So now we have wistful air or bitter black salts. Neither of these are particularly interesting on their own. Uh, we've got the awakened feather, which we can make with sights and sensations. Are there any other sky? Okay, furs and feathers. Another awakened feather. Awkwooks and clockworks can make an awakened feather. Um, fast blowing vessel crafting, dear de lens, that might actually be slightly useful. Uh, but this is more so for my own curiosity rather than wanting to actually make any of these. What I would like to do is use the inks of containment at some point. The big challenge I have with the inks of containment is the real thing that I want from it is more uh, nectar oriented, I think. So. Um, we'll just use whatever. So we've got Ugal ink here. I think if I have a high level of sky, we get Stargall. That's clearly not enough. Ooh. Hmm, actually. some effort, but, um, oh, you're kidding me. All right. Um, no, Vagabond's not going to like that either. I was thinking that maybe what I can try and do is combine the hail and the storm with the inks of containment somehow. So I was thinking maybe the sunset harp. Actually, you know what? It'll take an element of the soul. So if I add my shaft here, there we go. I can make Stargall ink. Um, now, why would I do such a foolish thing? Um, the reason for this is that I still want an ink to be able to uh, bring in Strathcoin. Now, Strathcoin actually is going to require... Um, uh, he's going to require uh, scale. So what I would want would be something like Caribbean. But just being able to generate some ink that I might be able to use either in creating... Uh, so this I would be able to use with a sky text. Um, but yeah, just basically being able to make some some ink is kind of progress of a kind. But the other the the truth of the matter is I'm sort of grasping at straws for hail, which is normally a useful memory for me, but in this particular instance uh, doesn't really give me what I need. I'm also kind of conscious of the time, so it's about uh, eleven o'clock where I am. I've been going for about 10 hours now. Now, I still have some time left. Um, I don't mind going a bit longer today. 
Um, but I am definitely going to need a bit of a break, partly uh, because I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Um, but I figure I'm going to, I'll take another, I, know, I realize I took a recent break, but I'm just going to take a minute to refill. Uh, I'm going to take a minute to relieve myself and um, just get myself ready to go for a little bit more. Uh, and I encourage you all to do the same. So I'll try and keep it a quick one, uh, but I do have a couple of a couple of priorities I want to handle. Again, I'm never quite sure when to wrap these things up. Um, so I'm just going to put myself in a position to be able to uh, do a little bit more if the, if the mood takes us. So I'll see you all in a little bit. Thank you. 
Okay, that took a little longer than I was planning, but thank you everybody for sticking around. Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna have to run off for one quick second. I just put the kettle on, um, but I figure I won't hold the stream back that much longer because um, it won't take that. It, it won't be that much to um, to be able to. Um... Hey, welcome back, uh, Visper Fire. Hope the hurricane isn't causing too much trouble. Uh, but yeah, so I, there is some stuff that I can do with the sky, um, with like the hail and all of that. But honestly, the smartest thing for me to do right now would probably be to just catalog all of these books. So, in fact, I will go so far as to say it might even make sense um, to okay here's what i'm gonna do uh one of these shops i'm just gonna cycle through in terms of um making some money and restoring it the metal and the shop i'm going to use to catalog the remaining books if an opportunity comes up with a memory great but i'm just gonna hang on to the storm until i have a better idea of what i need to do um, and I think that's going to bring me back to a spot where, again, until I start getting some of these languages, I'm really not going to commit that much to the Tree of Wisdom. So I would like to be able to make the most of this time uh, and, and like turn that into either new knowledge or uh, to turn it into something that will get me in a better position for the next the next round. And picking stuff like the blue crown is really helpful here because it will allow me to do things like um, put together my, um, uh, like I'll be able to use that to um, make some uh, uh, make some teas and, and just generally use them as um, as inputs to uh, to various various crafting ingredients. Oh, this is a good one. Six letters on necessity because transformations and liberations will give me some moth. Uh, and that's not a hard one for us to read. So I'll put that in here. The six letters on necessity. So again, at this point, we're just going to cycle through the sweet bones. I'm expecting that at the end of the day, I'll, I'll have more money than I started with, but that is also intentional given that <clears throat> the real plan here is going to be able to buy, uh, buy some things that I will turn into, um, that'll turn into, um, to food when we start a salon. I'm also going to restore the health, um, Actually, you know what? We'll just we'll do that one at a time. Okay, the War of the Roads, 1451 to 1551. Willis Ford describes the War of the Roads, an event in a history other than our own in detail, from its beginnings as a martial philosophical dispute between the dawn and sunset roads of alchemy to a war which ravaged half of Europe. It is not now widely believed, sorry, it is not now widely believed that the sons and daughters of the Red Rose were forged into immortals. Understandably, they are, after all, now all long dead. The forge itself devoured the greatest among them. The royalty of England, according to Willis Ford, became the sovereigns of the leashed flame, destroying or transforming their enemies, conquering Europe, establishing grand cathedrals to St. Spark. The alliance with the forge begins to take its toll. At last, the Bronze King undergoes his great misfortune and great debasement, and is afterwards known as the Copper King. His attempt to cheat the Forge ends badly. The Leashed Flame is released, and the King's heirs are merely mortal sovereigns. So here we get Menescate Reflections. We get a Foresight, so I will add that to the Foresight list. And we'll add this to our list of skills, but... Um, I just need to step away for one brief moment. 
and then I'll be back for a longer period of time. Just see you in, see you in a bit. All right, so the trick I found with these streams is that if I start with coffee, I'm gonna be exhausted by the end of it. But if I have like a normal, if I have normal food, you know, some fruit, good breakfast, and then at the end of the stream, uh, I switch to coffee, that usually keeps me through and then I can do all the other stuff that I had planned for today. So, sorry, I realize that this is just tedious. Nobody really cares about how, how you maintain a long stream, but, this is also the DLC, which has a whole bunch of cooking mechanics, and we have made a special occult tea, Blue Crown tea, so I figured it was worth sharing. All right, we're still gonna cycle the shaft, so we'll make money, we'll restore it. I am going to add Menescate Reflections, so examine, appreciate, catalog. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms. Menescate Reflections, without is purified, within is erased. This is an interesting one because it's effective against theoplasmic contamination. It is worth remembering that we do have a couple of books which have uh, various curses and, uh, and afflictions on them. So for instance, there's the Witch Worms, which will require seven winter, something that's effective against infestations. And then for the Chionic Theoplasma, we need something that can remove theoplasmic contamination with at least seven heart. Now, this one uh, is Edge and Forge, so it's not going to help me too much. Uh, Eggs of Containment, again, also doesn't have the heart here, but it's just nice to be able to know some of, like, which of these has the, uh, the ability because I can start, um, I can sort of start adjusting my priorities in terms of leveling up based on what skills I need. All right, so I think we've got one more round with the shot. It would probably be nice if I used my uh, the elements of the soul for a little bit more. I feel like I probably am spending too much making money with this shop here, but we just have so many books. Like in the end, there's a certain point where it's like, well, you know, what am I really gaining by, um, you know, by adding that that extra one um, one element to the soul? I don't know. We'll we'll make it work. Okay, so again, uh, none of the, the memories that I have right now are relevant to my, uh, my immediate needs. So I'm going to keep the storm just because that has the highest, um, uh, it has the heart and sky. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my day. Memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. All right, so the first thing I want to see here is the six letters of necessity. So uh, I'll just double check. I believe Edict's liminal, yes. Okay, so this is a piece of cake. The only catch is that I may not have a desk which takes moth. Yep, that would be up here. So I'll just use my consider verb in this case because my tryst and the... Um, the Edict's Liminal will be sufficient. Moth choice. I can master this mystery. Enough moth to match mystery moth. 
While we're doing that, uh, I do have a choice to make in terms of whether or not I'd like to continue reading Honey, the Comprehensive Guide. The pro is that the insects and nectars will have uh, another nectar, which I can use to pluck more uh, blue crown with. Um, the con is that it does keep me from harvesting blue crown and I don't have that much more time left in winter. So I think in this case, I'm gonna keep harvesting the blue crown with what I already have. And so the remaining, um, elements here are really dedicated to studying or to cataloging books. So I'll do the same thing. We'll use the shaft at the sweet bones to earn a bit of money. And then we'll use two elements of the soul, possibly um, the shaft as well to catalog the remaining books. So I'm just going to double check. So this is cleared out. We already put these in my inventory. Um, I think I'll just get the ones in Alopolis nook and then we'll clear out my inventory. So, Ambrose's desk with the metal. And then I think I can use the reading room. Nope. But I can use the vagabond desk. This is not to say I could still try things like the Admonitory Automata project. Um, there's no rule saying that I have to, uh, I just have to catalog these things. But the way I'm feeling right now, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to just clear out the books and get an idea in terms of exactly what I can use. Um, and in this case, I'm happy to just, uh, I'm happy to just put the, um, the effort into uh, to slowly cataloging the books for the rest of winter. All right, on Thirstleys, Ivories, and Lovelies, Fiona Ayrshire recounts her visits to the dream, uh, sorry, in dreams to the Red Church in the Mansus and her conversations with the names of the Grail. So that's another uh, 10. Where was my 10? Yeah, up here. No curses on it, which is nice. And seven shards, so that is also a ten-edge text. I suspect I'll probably be more likely to read that one for too long. Uh, but at this point, we're really just going to be babysitting the sweet bones until something big happens. The six letters on necessity, warnings and confessions about the cost of the secret arts addressed to a student by the 17th century magus and reputed immortal Julian Coesley. And here we've got few flowers flourish in the depths of winter. Blue crown is one of those few. So again, this is all going to stay in the kitchen because it's most likely going to be turned into tea. But right now I just want to keep it as a flower so that I have options. May also be an idea for me to try and drop some water, but again, the water requires health, so I'm I'm sort of stuck in terms of um, giving up. Um, I'm going to try and restore some more shot, but yeah, um, I am sort of stuck in terms of how often I want to use that uh, that particular skill and why. All right, let's try reading this again. Six Letters on Necessity, Warnings and Confessions about the Cost of the Secret Arts, addressed to a student by the 17th century magus and reputed immortal Julian Coesley. Coesley's tone is urgent, as if he suspected he might have little time left. Even the sun can be divided, though it require the forge of days for its division. So just give me one quick second here. Okay, so we've got transformations and liberations. This is a pretty helpful skill and another foresight. There we go. So we'll use the consider verb, use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And it always doesn't hurt just to take a quick audit of what I have available. So we've got the second floor of the Motley Tower. 
We've got the shadowed atrium. We have the silvered snares, the grand ascent second floor. I should actually double check on this one because if I've got a snow of three, yeah, hang on a minute. I really should be using um, Denzil in this case. So to speak with Denzil, I'm always welcome at Denzil's smithy. Denzil will offer help for free as a friend. If you give him the cult coinage, he will perform the service of division. So the reason I want to do this, so we're going to talk with Denzil about the snow. Talk about the weather, more useful than one might expect, especially in Britain. Now the leaf on the Tree of Wisdom. Forge and Moth are less different than we think. Every change is in some way a release. All right, so if I feed him the Blue Crown Tea, uh, alternatively, I could just feed him a glass of water as well. So I guess I don't even need to give up the tea. Um, I think we could just use the glass of Isle Water here. Um, but given the fact that I only need the five winter, it's foolish for me not to take the opportunity to do that. So, so appropriately, we will definitely use the knife. This is the um, knife becoming very helpful again. I can lend my assistant something to help, increasing their abilities. Pour it out. Better now. So in this case, we'll just um, earn the money with the shaft again. This tool has boosted their aspects appropriately. So one final step. We'll give them a glass of water. I can offer my assistant something to drink. This will increase their aspects. They'll also be glad of the refreshment. Down to the Gresham's. So oh, right just occurred to me I need to all right so now I can keep talking with um, with Denzel but the catch here is what what exactly am I trying to accomplish with that um, we've sort of already covered that the reason why I can't read some of these books has more to do with what skills I currently have available now I may want to audit and, and interrogate that but right now, um, the focus is going to be to open up the last of the Grand Ascent, which is not immediately available to me. It is unexpectedly difficult to raise my foot to the last step before the landing. Leaf shadows drift across my sight, and the windows hiss and rattle. I've heard that Gervinus van Loren, last librarian before me, was skilled at the forbidding of ways. So I think I'm going to try bringing back the shop one more time. It is winter and the storms have tightened the seas. I'm sitting before the fire in the sweet bones with a beef and potato pasty in one hand and a hot ale posset in the other. And I'm going to use this shop to catalog another book. And here we go, the second floor Grand Ascent. By long tradition, each Baron Brancrook had their image set in a niche in the Grand Ascent. Later, the Curie of the Isle continued the tradition for their librarians. And here we have a vase of lilies, an elegant ornament. We also have the abandoned bedroom. A crooning whisper haunts this room. It must once have been luxurious and will be again once I have it restored, but I will need help to lay the restless presence that drifts here. So five moon, five rose. I'm not expecting to open this anytime soon, but it's nice to know what I'm up against. Okay, so uh, the shaft, I could try and turn it into money, but what I want to do here is to actually try and get a head start on cataloging. So this is the last in Alopoli's Nook, Catalog of Curia Period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's Curia Period, roughly the 1700s to 1800s. Um, and here we'll remember the storm. And this is the Fire Circle Tantra, an eight moth text. I guess I should probably keep the Tantras... I haven't read any of these yet, so I'm just going to keep these in the... Um, The little cubbies here. Again, I'll put some thought into um, 
put some thought into how to properly hold on to these, but for now this this will do. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about where we are overall. Um, in terms of books, we've got a couple that we're not touching because they are tainted. Um, we're looking okay in terms of most of the books that I can access without putting any special effort we've got. The only thing I'm sort of behind on is I've still not opened these two caches and I still have the five books in my inventory, but that was, you know, that was always going to be a thing. Okay, memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. Uh, nothing... Well, we'll see what the weather brings. I'll still use the shop to earn some money and sweet bones. We'll see whether or not we get any weather that might do something. Okay, so the gale's worth paying attention to just because you never know if there's another opportunity. So, for instance, we've got the wrecked pantry. Uh, we add the health to the gale, which gives us four. We add the kitchen bowls, which gives us five. And then that's the problem, right? What um, we can get six with, well, okay, actually, hang on. So if we get six with the water, um, I guess I could technically get the seven with the misshapen fruit. So I guess the question is, do I really want to try uh, for the wrecked pantry there? I wouldn't say no but then that would mean giving up the blue crown. That I don't feel as strongly about. So I think we're gonna keep going for the blue crown and we'll do our usual uh, routine, so. Whoa. I realize it's not the most exciting option that I can go for, but um... Oh! <laughs> We're already done. Current affairs, what's happening in the world beyond Brankrug? What visitors will the season bring? The affair of the Royal Endeavor and the yearly stipend. The yearly stipend from St. Ronwyn's has arrived along with the rather usual sniffy reminder that I should spend it wisely. So we have quite a bit of money here. Oh, I ruined it. Okay, so one pound note. I believe a half crown is more than a florin. Let's double check that. 60, 30, 24. Cool. Penny, two order forms, Hokebold's card, a gold spintria, and a bronze spintria, and a partridge in a pear tree. All right. So uh, that is our first year in Brandkrug. Um, we are back to the spring. I've carried a memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. This will complete once dawn has come. Um, so what do I want to make of the day? Um, the tryst, I guess, wouldn't hurt to catalog another book. And of course, we've got the free talk verb for whoever visits. So I'd say overall, we're in pretty good shape. On the matters and deeds of serpents, this was probably the prophecies of the Naga, recorded into, rendered into English and illustrated by William Midnight in Paris in the 1880s. But it shows a number of divergences from that text. It's certainly quite recent by the standards of VAC texts. So I feel that we've got enough VAC kicking around here that maybe I want to give it its own shelf. Oops. Okay, so that helps me clean things up a little bit should figure out. I think for opening the sky, we'll just stick that in the last of the cubbies. I'm going to need a little bit more of a thoughtful approach in future. 
against the sisterhood of the knot and the foulness of their depraved customs. Hieronymus pseudo hypnotomachus wrote this furious screed about the sinister influence of the sisterhood of the knot on his own church of the unconquered sun. So this would actually not be a bad use for the gale. Um, I just think we might actually hang on. So if we took the uh, if we took this, then we added the gale, we could add the astrolabe, and then we could add bells and braziers. So then we just add an element of the soul and we're good to go. So we'll use the, I guess I would need to bring the health for that. So maybe we do the same story, but we do that at Ambrose's desk and we use the shaft. All right, now I have an idea of this book's nature and its contents. On the white, Solomon Husher writes, perhaps allegorically, of winter and its long, slow, doomed romance with the sun. The epigraph is sunset at noon. Uh, ragged crossroads on its own is not sufficient to open it, but with three winter, we add the knife, which gives us four, and then we add hindsight, which gives us six. So we don't even need to worry about having whist for that. Right, as they used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So we're going to restore this shot so that we can use uh, the gale. And here we've got D.I. Douglas Moore, detective illuminate of the Suppression Bureau, a stoic but weary fellow. His dearest wish is to move to Chingford to grow roses, but the buggers won't let him retire. For those of you that have played Culta Simulator, this is in fact the weary detective. And there's a couple of indications for this. Um, but by far my favorite will be when I start talking with this gentleman. So, a conversation with a very tired detective. All right, if there is an incident card active, you can discuss it or just leave the slot empty and offer a consultation. Detective Illuminate Douglas Moore on special assignment to the high executive for the Royal Endeavor. Get me. Oh, uh, hope you're impressed. <laughs> Anyone builds something important, there's always someone trying to break into it or blow it up. That's the job. Funny to see a pack of vicars getting involved with something like that, though. Suppose that's why they call doctrinal—that's what it's what they call doctrinal differences. Here to look into that. All right. So lowest possible lantern is best, but I don't think I really have that much. As far as lantern mysteries are concerned, I think it's the same as before. So, so now here's an example. We were talking a little bit earlier about the different languages. So in this case, D.I. Douglas Moore understands English and he understands Greek. So if I give him the watchful tantra, he doesn't understand Sanskrit. It doesn't help in terms of answering his questions. So if we give him the good old fashioned um, prophecies of glory or alternatively a light in the inkwell, Thanks for that. Got a much better idea of, whom, of who might need a resting. Mrs. M's going to like that. No time at all for the church. Mrs. M, proper free thinker. Never mind all them poor mediums, she says. Lock up a bishop or two. Save all that money on silly hats. Told her once if we locked up too many people for spending too much on millinery, she might need to watch out. Had to eat my dinner in the garden shed that evening. Anyway, ta-ta. <laughs> I really like Douglas's. Um, I've actually read this once before, but I completely forgot the garden shed line. Uh, D.I. Moore gets some of the better lines in this, I feel. Uh, he's got some good lines during the salons as well, so I'm hoping we'll get a chance to, to do at least one of them with him. All right, that's the last blue crown for... Uh, the season. Still, three is not bad. That would be, if we used it just for tea, that's going to get us another six uh, glasses. Although, ideally, we don't just use this for blue crown tea. Okay, better now. So I'm going to take the time here to renew this shop just because I'm going to, I'm going to need it for other things. So we use Ambrose's desk, we can use the shaft here. We can now take against the sisterhood of the knot and the foulness of their depraved customs. So we'll combine the gale with that, and then we add bells and braziers. 
Finally, we need one more sky, which we can get from Baron Silence's Astrolabe, and I can master this mystery enough sky to match mystery sky. And then tomorrow, um, in game, we can use the um, metal and the uh, and the um, the shop to catalog the remaining two books. And then from there, I'm actually going to have a few questions in terms of what I want to do. So now that I could do some gardening, I would actually be able to get the grapes uh, during spring. Um, I would also be able, uh, in this case, we want to take a look at any scale. So eight scale, we might be able to try. I don't think it would be sensible, but you never know. Okay, actually, we don't have that many things for the miners, so maybe we just try the Motley Tower when, when the time comes. Okay, another Bronze Spindria and D.I. Moore's card. So if we can find a use for this Occult Scrap here where we've got two cards. I don't mind waiting for Hokobald's card. That's just because he um, he's actually quite difficult to bring in, especially early on in the game. Uh, so if I can bring in Douglas Moore, so much the better. But I do want to try and make the most of the occult scrap when I have it. Oh, got this. Against the sister of the knot and the foulness of their depraved custom, uh, customs, Hieronymus Pseudo Hypnotomachus wrote this furious screed about the sinister influence of the sister of the knot on his own church of the unconquered sun. Hieronymus claims that the powers served by the sisterhood of the knot made an arrangement. The Thunderskin loved the Yew and the Grail destroyed him as restitution for the destruction of the Axe's loved ones. Hieronymus' writing becomes incoherent with rage at this point. Hieronymus recovers his composure eventually to describe how the Thunderskin entered the Mansus through the Peacock Door. This, Hieronymus insists, is abomination upon abomination, but then the most abominable of doors has always been an abomination. So this gives us an intuition. I believe that is actually the first intuition that we've gotten. So that's a little bit like a confounding parable, except that it doesn't have the sky aspect. So acquire sky stories, use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And I think that's it. I think I could try and restore the shaft one more time. Another leaf on the tree of wisdoms. Sky stories, the nine winds gossip, and sometimes we can listen. So I'm just going to take a look here. So yes, this is the first of the rose skills that I have. Now, realistically, I don't think this is going to move the needle that much. So we've got letters from a fugitive. We now would need five more. We've got the uh, lunar globe. So that would mean four more. And we can generate two through the intuition. So that's two, but we don't have a FET. Otherwise, we'd be ready to go with this. Okay, I'm just at the edge of being able to catalog this book in time. I'm going to take a shot, but I'm not going to feel good about it. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's Curia period, roughly the 1700s to 1800s. And we will still keep the storm. Oh, we just got it. Excellent. All right, Exorcism for Girls. This is a good one. It's a pretty straightforward one for us to follow. So I think I think things are looking up. So again, fixing and mending. There's not much work on offer in Brand Crew, but I can find six pence worth of odd jobs. If this feels a little routine, um, it's mostly just because I wanted to try and get through the... Um, the uncatalogued texts as quickly as I could just so that I can have an idea in terms of what it's mostly about the runway that I have to be able to do um, uh, like before I'm going to need to unlock a certain room just give me a second here I'm going to 
Enjoy a quick sip of coffee. So, uh, first up, I guess it depends on what the weather brings, but I think it's usually pretty safe. Oh, we'll use um, the metal in this case. So catalog a Curia period book. Now the question is going to be, what do I want to do with each of these? So exorcism for girls, if I have enough edge, actually the metal might have made a little more sense. Got four, we could get five with the metal. Yeah, I should have restored the metal, but that's fine. We can, um, we can bring that back. Unless uh, Ragged Crossroads... If I had a memory with Edge, that would be good, but I don't. Um, okay, so on the white... This feels like I should be able to do this one. So Ragged Crossroads the highest on that one. Okay, yeah, no, we just need the relevant memory. Okay, so with that in mind, we will take the Tryst. We will read a book with the Hindsight. So for this one, we'll do Introduction to the Histories. This is a sunny day, so there's not a whole lot that we can take out of that, but that's fine. I don't really need to overdo it. Now, I do have um, my health available. I think for this one, I'm going to draw up the water. Um, but I would like to do a little bit of gardening with, um, with my health. And I can't remember if I'm making... Yes, we're already making money at the... Bone. So probably what will happen with this shaft, I'll consider what some of my options are with um, with uh, Ambrose's desk. Okay, the berry book. This is another Kilisimi text, so we'll just put that over there. Not cursed, so that's good, but that is it for my... So basically, when it comes to the texts, um, this is it. Um, Key of Night's going to require a little bit of work, as is um, Letters from the Fugitive. Given the right weather, I think we can read the Orchid Transfigurations of Feast. Um, I wish I could reorganize this a little bit better. Is now organized better. Um, all right. Excuse me. Uh, moth. So the moth that I would be bringing here, we've got two from the Trist, and then we've got uh, one from... No, two from Edict Liminal. So we've got four, theoretically six with... Um, a memory. Okay, now I'm interested. So the Rose of Hypatia is a possibility. Uh, to a Pale Lady. Now, I thought we had more Moon than we actually do. Let's say we've got three with the Tryst and Rhyme and Remembrance. Four with the um, Globe, which gives us six with the Memory. So, maybe. And then Ettery After... Three with winter. We don't have a skill. Uh, four with the tool. Six with the memory. Okay, so these are possibilities. And actually with that in mind, that would mean the key of night. And All right. Definitely stretching the definition of possible, but... And I do think I need to start thinking about how I'm going to be making some inks before too long. All 
All right, the 17th century mystic and antiquarian, uh, antiquarian Claude Hersault describes divergent incidents in five major histories. The prologue warns at length about the iniquities of one Julian Cosley, a former colleague who Hersault now describes darkly as a worm of worms. It seems Cosley advised Hersault early in the writing of this book, but Hersault later became suspicious. Hersault identifies blood, silver, design, and the worms as the central axes of the histories and claims that the so-called second history is the true one. So this should translate into a um, this should translate into a book we can read now. So we will use the pay. Oh, what do I think I'm doing here? I'm pretty sure I bungled this because I'm going to need the tryst. So. We've got on the white, so what I would do here is I'd add the hindsight, then I add um, ragged cross. Well, I could also try rhyme and remembrance. The question is, how do I get the shaft into this place? Because it doesn't work for either of these locations. So my other alternative here would be hindsight, which needs a winter or scale. That doesn't work with either of them. Um, Yep, I messed up, so I'm going to need to restore the twist at some point. Of course, we've already committed the shot. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to read any books today, and what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to open up one of these containers. Something small and curious. Crack open the container. Delight in your discovery. A little water splashes on the stones of the well to nourish the mosses there. So this is definitely overkill, but... I'm not going to complain about that. In fact, we can probably just turn this into a glass right now and replace, replace the one. Pour it out. All right. So we don't really need this right now, but it's just nice to have. A bronze pintria. Okay, that's welcome. I really should be turning this into language at some point. Let's restore the tryst. I'm going to be running short on time for this one, but I'll take it. Uh, the question is, do I want to make more money? I think I do, so I'll just hold on to the shaft. It would be nice to open up the box of rarities just so I don't have anything else that I need to engage with, but um, let's focus on cleaning things out first. And then as I was mentioning, um, once these are sort of taken care of, I will be examining some of the busts. All right, better now. So I don't have a ton of time on this, but on the white, hindsight, tryst, ragged crossroads, add in the bronze knife. Winter a conclusion. I can master this mystery. Enough winter to match mystery winter. And again, if I had uh, something with scale, if I had something that required a degree of moon, um, well, a realistic degree of moon, uh, I would be hiring the miner. But in this case, it's um, not that critical. Uh, I think I'm... I don't, actually don't think I have the time for it, so I'm going to just sit on the elements of the soul now. I was going to try to open up the container, but it occurred to me that that takes about a minute. So if that runs the risk of running over, uh, running overnight. So we'll hang on to the storm. This is mostly just because I have it available. On the white, Solomon Husher writes perhaps allegorically of winter and its long, slow, doomed romance with the sun. The epigraph is sunset at noon. On closer investigation, the work seems to be a theory of aesthetics, or perhaps a set of warnings about the dangers of painting. 
Usher writes distractedly about his suspicion of colors and his yearning for death. He hints at a great work that he has envisaged or begun where the palest of paintings will enthrall the world. He returns in again and again to certain compelling phrases which he claims are the secret words of winter. So we have quenchings and quellings for that. We have a regret, which I'm going to shelve accordingly. Again, I've relied on this a little more than I normally want to, but this is very helpful for streaming, just to have these all collected by memory. We'll add quenchings and quellings to our library. Or, well, to our list of skills, rather. And there we go. Arts which quench fires and bring solace to the troubled mind. A true adept is never troubled by fire, nor by fever, nor by restless spirit. Now, what's worthy of note here, we've got the theoplasmic contamination. And in this case, it does say that it needs at least seven hearts. So this puts me, this is in the right direction. I'm still going to need to add elements of the soul and such, but this is the sort of thing that would help to clear out the experiment beyond sight. Speaking of... Uh, Ten Forge is a little much, but... Okay, memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. Number one, fix and mend. Number two, open the box. Crack open the container, delight in your discovery. So, next up, I wanted to read Exorcism for Girls. So if I take the metal... The Ragged Crossroads, Exorcism for Girls. Uh, we are one short, so from there I add the saw, Edge of Conquest. I can master this mystery, enough edge to match mystery edge, and this is Sickle and Eclipse, which we don't have, so I can just add that to the inventory. Uh, next up, Honey, uh, the Comprehensive Guide. So this one I think was going to require a little bit of attention on my part. And actually the other thing that I need to focus on this one is that it's quite difficult to get nectar all in one place. So what I want to do here is I actually want to think realistically, can I put together the things that I need? So Spices and Savers is the start. I can't rely on a desk that gives me nectar because we've got the Vagabond desk, we've got the uh, Ambrose's desk, we've got the uh, reading room. We got Ava's and the Pale Desk. We don't have access to uh, Natan's desk, which doesn't have Nectar. The Nectar Desk, because I've played this game before, I know is up here. So what I'm realistically looking for is, is there a way for me to be able to get enough Nectar um, in a desk which has Forge? So the Forge Desk, uh, we've got Ambrose. Um, I guess... Theore no, it's not theoretically Vagabond Desk because I, I, need to, I need something that will accept spices and savers. So realistically, I think it's just Ambrose's desk that I can use here. So the next question would be, how do I get the relevant nectar in here? And the answer is I don't. Um, so my next best would be if I use the consider verb. So the consider verb, I can use my health. Uh, I combine that with spices and savers, which brings it up to two. I wouldn't be able to use a tool. Um, so the trick on that one would be I would need a two nectar memory, and I only get that when it rains. So that's fine. That that just gives me that gives me a target to work towards. But I'm not going to I'm not going to move heaven and earth to make that happen. So I've got moth orchids, I've got cat's claw, or I can harvest the grapes. I think I'm going to hang on to some of the grapes for a start. That's just because I happen to know that those are an ingredient um, that I'll need later. That was quick. Um, all right, librarian, we would like to offer you this opportunity to purchase uh, the Book of Dissolution. It is kind of expensive, but we do have the money. So in this case, I'll pick it up.
and desiccated witchworms, nasty little things, but almost safe when they're dead. We're just going to keep those in the infirmary for now. All right, let's restore the shaft. So the real dilemma right now is what I do with the Trist. It might actually make sense for me to visit Crowcross Sands at this point. Um, so the question would be, theoretically, if I were to try and do something with the moon, what would I try and do? So we'll say to a pale lady, uh, we would use rhyme and remembrance. So from there we would use the Trist. So that can get me four, six. Yeah, so I would really be waiting for the extra roll. Um, doesn't feel too good about. Um, They do have a couple of options for the Trist, um, but I think in this case here, I'm actually gonna go to Crow Cross Sands. What has the sea seeded today? Okay, a bunch of grapes. So the reason for getting the grapes here is that uh, there are a couple of ingredients or like a couple of recipes that do need grapes. The other thing is that I can feed grapes to Tuppence and Terrence to be able to get some eggs. And of course we know that eggs are the sort of thing that um, some of the guests that I want to invite can, um, can eat. Exorcism for Girls, simple but forceful techniques for rousting unbefitting spirits written in straightforward and colorful language. Blake seems uncertain at points whether the techniques are intended for use by or on girls. She clearly regards children as a nuisance. Thiers' advice on the shapeless wood things known as raw profits is typically practical. One, discourage them with buckets of water as close as possible to freezing and with smoke of dried lemongrass. Under no circumstances, two, under no circumstances, kiss them or receive kisses from them. And three, an effective formula is provided for laundering clothes stained with profits line. Okay, so I just need a quick second here. Okay, so we've got fear and sickle and eclipse. That's what I wanted. Still not sure about these. Better now. All right, I think I'm gonna keep trying with the shaft. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And I think we're just gonna hang on to that storm until I come up with a better replacement. Sea strewn salt snared stuff. So I've got contraband jetsam. And the Sickle and eclipse, eclipse, Salt and Silver, Balance, Necessity, and Rebuke. So this is good for Corruption. Also has two Edge. So again, lots of good skills. It's just a question in terms of like when I use them and how I use them. Um, again, I'm going to want to get these up to level 2 when all is said and done. I think also money-wise we're okay. I don't want to, um, I don't think I want to spend too much more effort on those. I think I should probably do something a little more productive at this point. Okay, so we've got the Book of Dissolution. Um, I'm not expecting to use this anytime soon, but it is an option available to me if I need it. And then this one we should be able to turn into cash. 
I'm not quite sure if I have a better use for it right now. But this is definitely the time where I want to start thinking about what the next step is going to be. So I guess we try either to a Pale Lady or the Rose of Hypatia. Rose of Hypatia is actually tempting here because of the weaving and not working. I've been making too much money. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if the fear makes any sense here. So Key of Night uh, with the health we get up to th so three here, four with the hourglass. God, that's a real shame. I think Wolf Stories is the best scale I can offer here. Uh, okay, so that's two, four, five. You know what? I'm giving this a shot. It's mostly just because I don't have a whole lot else to uh, throw at the problem, so I might as well try something a little more reckless. All right, memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. So, again, make some money. Uh, on this one, we'll take the health, the hissing key, combine that with wolf stories. Oh, we don't have the fear yet, uh, but we will have the fear in short order. So for that one, let's say, eh, we'll use the trust. I think I'll just read Seven Faces of Igorus again. And on this one, I think I'm actually going to open up the Contraband Jetsam right away. All right, so the clouds don't do a whole lot for me here. I forgot to get the fear in. That's a real shame. Okay, as a follow-up then... There's a couple things that I want to do. One, I think I'm going to try and um, do a bit more gardening. And now knowing that I'm short on the key of night, so I'm getting the fear back. I think on this one, I will get the hindsight. Trying to find out what I just threw my health away on. Okay, the seven faces of Icarus. In the early 1530s, the last abbot of St. Brendan's, called Roaring Richard, set down this con the conversations with the illiterate local cunning man, Red William. Red William describes the seven forms in which uh, he goes about and under the world. Viper, cat, fox, eagle, dove, boar, and crow. Abbot Richard ingeniously fits all of these into a framework of solar belief. According to Abbot Richard, each of the Red William's forms is closer to the sun and is increasingly winged with virtue. Richard draws an analogy with the waxen wings of Icarus. Hypocrisy and false virtue will melt before the sun's heat, and so sincerity and untrammeled expression of self are the utmost piety. It is worth noting that only a year or two after Richard wrote this book, John Tregonwell was so appalled by the debaucheries of the monks of St. Brendan's that he recommended the monastery's immediate dissolution. So this gives me the fear to work with. 
Now, I, I need to figure out exactly what's going on here because I really feel like I, I just lost my health. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit perplexed in terms of where it went. Okay, so we've got the metal here. This is just my sanity check in case I'm, you know, it's just a matter of reloading the save or something like that. Okay, so there's no, no memory there. Ambergris chunk, never, never, never call it whale vomit. Top shelf. All right, where the hell? Oh, right. Gathering in spring. Introduction to the histories. The 17th century mystic and antiquarian Claude Hersault describes divergent incidents in five major histories. The prologue warns at length of the iniquities of one Julian Cosley, a former colleague who Hersault now re describes darkly, as a worm of worms. It seems Cosley advised Hersault early in the writing of the book, but Hersault later became suspicious. Hersault identifies blood, silver, design, and the worms as the central axes of each of the histories, and claims that the so-called second history is the true one. So there's the hindsight. So we are basically ready to try the hissing key, um, but I don't fancy my chances. We'll see though. Moth Orchid is soft as velvet to the touch, except when it changes. So I should find a better place to store the Moth Orchid. I always wind up turning Elopoli's nook into a greenhouse, but... Alright, there's the health. Let's take the tuppence. It is spring and the landlady has served me a slice of her stargazy pie with the pilkered heads poking cheekily through the hot crust. Okay, so from there, better now, we'll then take the shaft. This is more about money, um, but the real trick here is so we're going to take our health. We're going to use that trick that we did before in terms of getting uh, getting a couple of cracks at the, um, the outcome that we want. So I do want to try and improve my chances as much as possible. <laughs> So here we've got five of the six required. Scale buried. Perhaps you've provide, provided scale, but not enough to match mystery scale. If you're lucky, you might still succeed. Okay, so better now. We will definitely turn that into money again. And what are we up against? So we've got uh, Right Sky's Weather, so weather's not going to help here. We've got Duende, so the Duende is a, sorry, is a force, not a labor, a struggle, not a thought. Lorca. And finally, uh, only connect memory, so we will be able to use the hindsight. So weather doesn't help. There's still a chance. All right, we've got the hindsight. And of course, the whole question of being able to turn this into, well, yeah, we should still be able to do this. So the key of night, the deliberations leading to a manifesto of the worms of a scale as recorded around 1900 in the bar Vienna in the cellar of the Hotel Siervo in noon. 
the worms, all of whom use grandiose nom de guerre like Citizen Knife and the Midnight Pilgrim, agree that all previous iterations of their movement have been feckless and treacherous, and agree that the return of the pre-human hours, the gods from stone, is the true way to end the tyranny of eternity. The worms identify the wheel, the tide, the flint, Sulochana, the spider door, the excellency Nathobasis, and Wickle Indistinguishable as the seven necessary pentiments that must be returned to every history through the propaganda of the deed. This, um, this is an eccentric list and clearly a compromise. The process of thrashing it out clearly exhausts all the participants who don't specify the necessary deed beyond a vague reference to the loopholes. So another fear. I'm getting quite a few of those. And pentiments and precursors. So again, the interest here is just in new, um, new lessons. Also just wanted to do a quick check on chat to make sure that everything was working. Looks like it is. All right, um, I still need to figure out what I'm doing with the cards, but I'm pretty happy with the fact that I've been able to reduce this down. I may try the same trick with, no, I can't do the same trick with Honey the Comprehensive Guide because I don't have enough uh, nectar. I need to get up to this part of the house. So I'm actually starting to run out of options here, um, but we will get summer, which should give me a few more as far as the moth is concerned. All right, as they used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. I think I'm just going to leave that be. So yeah, uh, my next couple of targets here are going to be to see what I can do with the occult scrap. And then I may want to try and get some cat's claw and moth orchid, although grapes would also be good. Obviously, I've got quite a bit. Um, that I want to do with my health. All right, pentiments and precursors, fates and fights of forgotten things, the carapace cross, the line of Antaios, the world of a low red sun. Though much is taken, much abides. Okay, daybreak. Memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. Again, one of the things that I want to be working on here is trying to produce some inks. I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to wait to see what the weather is, but I'm actually going to take some time to see if I can figure out some of the different recipes today. Hmm, the rain changes everything. So, Grail and Nectar. Not a chance. All right, so, hypothetically, if I were to do Honey a Comprehensive Guide, we took spices and say, oh, right, right. You know, this isn't impossible. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the... The shaft actually doesn't do that much for me right now. So we will still earn some money at the Sweet Bones just because that's an option available. I'm going to take the shop to get any impulse that I can. It's not impulse. I will read Ambrosial for this one. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. So I'm thinking what I do here is I'll use the uh, impulse from uh, the impulse for the nectar, and then what we hope for is that we can use the nectar from uh, from the rain 
uh, either as a memory or as weather to be able to finish Honey, a comprehensive guide. It's a bit of a long shot, but I think it's worth trying. Obviously, this means we won't be doing gardening either, but I don't think that's a hardship for today. All right, Ambrosial, Ambrose Westcott's inventive, one might say pioneering or indeed buccaneering, essays into kitchen craft. Westcott proudly announces his intention to transform cuisine to become an engine of alchemy, a fount of war. Westcott compares the ferocity of fire with the intensity of appetite as in essence, one essence. A fire's ability to transform and destroy grows when it is offered the correct fuel. So too, he implies, can a sufficiently inspired appetite allow its possessor to consume greatly, strangely, unwisely. So there's the impulse I was looking for. So what we'll do now, we will apply the honey. So we'll use the impulse here. It's not the strongest, but again, the chances that we can get a weather as part of the um, part of the rolls. So nectar, a hedge of thorns. You provided nectar, but not enough to match mystery nectar. If you're lucky, you might still succeed. Room here will continue to turn this around. Now, as far as the rest goes, um, the metal and the tryst, I feel like there are some things that I can be doing here. Um, Maybe I should have been experimenting with the um, recipes at the start of the day. What about the occult scraps? So I thought I had uh, letters from Fugitive. I don't actually know what how oh, it's right here. So we take two rows from this. Uh, the one from Sky Story, so that's three, four. Yeah, I mean, we can give it a shot. Let's see how the nectar turns out, though. Opportunities are still a chance. All of this is for soul, so this is definitely a loss here. But them's the breaks. The mysteries have defeated me for now. You can always try again later. So we got fear for that. Uh, but we didn't exhaust our health or anything like that. It's just fate to eat. Okay, so, you know, kind of smart. We didn't, didn't succeed in what we were looking to do, but that's fine. So what we will do instead, um, with what I have left over, let's take the metal, we'll add the uh, rain. Now there are different substances and solutions that I can add, but right now I want to see what I can do. Let's start by seeing what I can do with forge... Well, okay, so we've got Forge, Edge, Nectar, and um, and Grail. So let's see what I can pull off with these. So I suppose one of the first things I would look at would be the Blue Crown. And then under Solution, we should have a liquid and we can put a Winter Preparation here. So in this case, we don't have enough Winter. I don't have anything that can be added there. Well, that's fine, because again, we're just sort of throwing whatever we can together. Uh, next up, we would have bells and braziers. So if I have something forgy... So in this case, if I add metal to scholar level forge, I could alloy it into something exotic. So the question is, do I have metal currently? And weirdly enough, I think the answer to that is no. I would have to order it in. So even if I wind up with 10 Forge, that just doesn't really do anything. So now we'll do Spices and Savers. So here we've got Thiers' Cordials right off the bat. Under Substance, let's find something nice and forgy. Actually, something nice and forgy would probably be the Xanthotic Essence. 
Okay, Westcott's compounds. And under a substance, a uh, honey scar jasmine wouldn't be terrible, although I'd need some four forge to really find out what the next one. So if I add a liquid to scholar level forge, the essences will take longer to cool and redden into something more potent. So I think that's probably iotic essence. Uh, pyroglyphics, we've got Westcott's compounds again. Um, if I tried to add lantern, well, actually, lantern we could add through this. There's Deer Day Lens. Uh, I don't think I can bring three in, though. That's a pretty. That would be a pretty significant. Oh, excuse me. Discovery. Okay. Uh, we are on a little bit of a roll, though. Um, transformations and liberations. Okay, same story. Um, any other forge? Menescate Reflections. All right, so lots of Westcott's compounds. Any other bright ideas? Um, I can try and see what I can do with the Triss. The problem here is the moth and the... Oh, we might actually have some moth to play around with. So what's the... I guess the more relevant question here would be what's the workstation? And the piano seems like a good start. So with that, we can add the occult scrap. I mean, I suppose we can add the, nope, we can't add the rain. How long am I gonna stream for? You've been going nearly 12 hours now. Oh, well, you know, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I'm not quite sure, Selfay. Normally what I do is I try to take a look at the viewership. If there is um, sort of a, a healthy engagement, I try to keep it going because obviously the hope here is to try and show off the game in a good light for people who might be interested in picking it up. Um, but I am I'm paid for this, uh, so I also don't want to sort of flog the thing longer than it has to be uh, just because, you know, I might make a couple bucks more. So... Um, but normally I tend to go a bit later on these just because I think there's, um, I don't know, I, I get the impression that people enjoy uh, enjoy seeing it. And um, where I can, I, uh, I, I want to try and give a little extra value for, um, for people who might be on the fence about the game. So with that in mind, if people would like, uh, definitely don't hesitate to ask questions, even if they're like starting off questions. Uh, they're ones that I appreciate just because, again, it's Sometimes difficult to remember uh, the person that I was at the start of the at the start of the session. Um, I do tend to get in my in my own head for some of these things. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I, I've talked. I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about me and this stuff, obviously. But my view of it is um, the way I usually pace myself for the long ones, number one, breaks. Uh, I understand that they are absolute murder for viewership, but it's important to take them. Uh, and then normally, you know, I make sure I have a good breakfast, uh, lunch if uh, the hour is appropriate. And, you know, for snacks and things like that, it's usually like the usual suspects, like nuts, fruit, the, the, the usual and then to kind of get me through that last little bit at the end, if I think it's going to be a really long one, basically don't drink coffee until the very end. And I'm now at the coffee phase. I actually also have a slightly cold tea now. Um, and I find like if I if I just keep constantly drinking the coffee, it's it's like I'm not. It's just like I'm not having anything. Um, but if I'm if I'm kind of putting putting a little bit in each time, um, that sort of helps me helps me keep equilibrium. Obviously, I just get fatigued and I I don't make as much sense. Like I'm never I'm never going to be able to be a hundred percent like uh, like I was at the start after a really long stream. Um, but where I can, I I do try to make sure that I'm ready to um, you know if if it's working um, to to put in a little extra time. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely, like when I when I feel like I can't go any longer, I definitely stop. Um, most of the time I have stopped because I feel like I can't, I can't keep going, not because I, because I think people uh, aren't interested. Okay, um, I need to figure out what I want to try and do here, because I feel like I've got some pieces, but I don't have, I don't have the full... 
I don't have the full uh, picture in terms of what I need. And now I'm waiting on summer for the Motley Tower. You know, I don't actually need to make this hard. Um, so we've got Serena Blackwood. Investigate the object. You won't use this up or consume it by doing this. So I'm kind of hammering the sweet bones like this because I will wind up ordering some uh, things from Cater and Hero. Serena Blackwood, 10th librarian, a redoubtable scholar and administrator who quarreled with the prison governor and never completed her term. So here we go, 10th. A niche with a plaque who departed but did not forget. And if I want, I can actually do that for the remaining busts, which is exactly what I intend to do here. Investigate this object. Sight. The eye sees more than the heart knows. Blake. Uh, this bust is covered from serpentinite, a striking local stone. Walter DeWolf, who found Hush House a drafty castle and left it a stately home, but who will always be remembered for his cowardice, his sorrow, and his son Brian's treachery. So I actually don't have Walter in the... I'm trying to remember. I think he was third. He commanded the raising of the stair. I should actually have this. I could have sworn I had this book somewhere. Hmm. I'll put him there for now. Um, Okay, we've got Hendrik de Wolf, so son, grandson. Yeah, no, we're good. All right, that keeps me occupied. Uh, if I want, I can also investigate another uh, bust, which I think I'll do. I'll use that in, with Fraser's bust. Investigate the object. This bust is shaped from beeswax. Careful with it. Fraser Strathcoin, the collector, formerly treasury of the Curia and uh, sorry, treasurer of the Curia, and briefly, in the absence of other candidates, and to his annoyance, fourth librarian. Niche with a plaque who died not, but passed within. Night has fallen, dawn will come soon. All right, memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. So let's think about <clears throat> what I want to do for the rest of the day, or really the rest of the season. It kind of depends on how the weather goes. So I could take another crack at um, Honey the Comprehensive Guide, but I think that depends on the weather. So in this case, we'll speed things up to see what the weather brings. All right, more rain. So in this case, I actually think it's worth taking another shot at this. So the Trist doesn't... I don't have any major needs for the Trist right now, so we will try another Impulse. Uh, again, I figure it doesn't hurt to try and make a little bit of money at the Sweet Bones. And then from there, uh, let's take a look at Ambrose's bust. And we'll use the shaft on that one. This bust is cast in brass. 
So this is one of the things I wanted to do much earlier on, which was investigate some of the busts. But this is also a good example here where I'm like, okay, there's, there's, I don't have the sorts of things that I would normally want to do um, in between. And so this is now a good opportunity for me to catch up on some of these investigations that I would have done before. Okay, Ambrose Westcott, first librarian of Hush House, metallurgist, alchemist, pyrographer. There you go. Let's see what the nectar brings. Traveling at Night, Volume 1, the annotated dream journals of Christopher Allopoli, sometimes called the only readable occultist, literate, entertaining, bewildering. The wood lies outside the walls of the Mansus. As any student of the histories knows, the Mansus has no walls. Allopoli describes how he came to make repeated visits to a dream wood via what he calls silver dreams. Trying to think your way to the wood, he explains, is like thinking your way to being in love, but I did find a secret that helped. So, impulse there. And again, we're going to try the same trick as before. We'll take honey, we will add spices and savors, and we will rely on the impulse here just because I know I'm going to need a memory or something like that uh, to be able to get through it. So. Now, I should take a look at the metal and see if there's something else I might want to get done. Um, I guess I already examined the different uh, elements of the soul. I guess, uh, so three, five, seven, eight, yeah. Um, anything with ten, well actually no, hang on, if I think of it. So we've got the projector, and we've got the admonitory automata project. So what we could do for this one, if we take the film and we take the metal, so then we take bells and brasieries, which is three, and we've got the memory, right? So, oh no, hang on. Um, I'm still one short. Maybe it's still worth a shot though. Okay, this time around. Uh, art, it's educational. Possible inspiration from a relevant painting or other wall art. Uh, extra effort soul, so that doesn't help us. And Duende again. But I think this time with the wall art, we should be able to make the nectar work out. So we'll ignore the soul. Wall art. Take a moment to look at something here. Increase the relevant aspects by referencing a piece of wall art. Now there is the catch. I do need to find some kind of nectar wall art. Easier said than done. Nope, there we go. Leaves in the wind. A soothing but undistinguished work in oils. Someone evidently was good at trees and wanted you to know it. And there you have it. So this is one of the things I really like about the way sort of knowledge works in the game, right? So we talked a little bit about how, as an RPG, this still uh, follows some of that those core ideas, right? You have attributes in the forms of elements of the soul, and you have skills, you know, just in the form of skills. Um, but your XP isn't so much, you know, I did something and I got awarded a certain number of points, and those points can be translated into completely unrelated fields. Um, and again, it's not the only game that handles that. You know, the Elder Scrolls gives you um, some sort of bonus experience or gives you makes it easier to level up the things that you're practiced in. And even tabletop RPGs do this. But what I kind of like about the way that it works in Book of Hours is that, again, you read a book, you get a lesson, those lessons get applied towards skills, and those skills can only be leveled up when you have... Um, you know, when you have certain memories. So if you want to get to that level nine, you need to have eight unique memories. Essentially, you have a complete mastery of your subject. Um, and one of the things that's neat here, right, is that 
how many times, everybody's had this experience, right? You're working on a problem, and you really can't crack it, but you, you go for a walk, or you make a cup of tea, or you just do something and takes your mind off it and the solution presents itself. And that's present inside of the book here, right? So even though we didn't have the resources we needed to be able to read Honey, a Comprehensive Guide, we had enough that we just needed the right moment of inspiration and we were able to see that thing through to the end. And uh, again, it's one of these things where it's an experience that I think everybody can relate to, but it's not necessarily something that you see represented in games a whole lot because it's hard to do. Um, but uh, Weather Factory's really been able to take little moments like that. It's something that's not even unique to Book of Hours, I feel like. I think they do this well in their other games like Cultist Simulator. Um, but there's a number of times where they've done things where I'm like, I know exactly what that means or what that looks like, even though it's represented in terms of cards. And I think this is one of the reasons why, as far as narratives are concerned, they're really a cut above. It's not so much, you know, you see this big descriptions in terms of, you know, oh, this thing made me cry. Um, rather, it's more you know, you really get to put yourself in the shoes of this character and, and little things. And again, I, I am a little bit bookish by nature. So just being able to see how this game represents knowledge and, and the acquisition and ordering of it is something that I keep returning to as a, as a, uh, an idea that I'm, I'm fond of. Anyways, Honey, a comprehensive guide. Harvey Haddington, pilot polymath confectioner, writes with great enthusiasm about the marvelous work of the bee. Addington insists that all the primary aspects, nectar, scale, heart, lantern, moth, grail, are possessed by bees and expressed in honey. Clearly, he points out that there are only six primary aspects, as honeycomb has only six angles. Yugal ink is prepared with these techniques, but so is skinshuck mead, and only skinshuck mead requires honey. Just as any beverage or foodstuff can be improved with the addition of honey, so any garden is improved by the presence of bees, even those bloody blomberendi. So we get contradiction for that. Insects and nectars. So we'll add honey to the contradiction section. And we will acquire insects and nectars. also probably investigate the, um, the Musgrave statue. Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms. The hive, the nest, and the chrysalids are the three secret principal, uh, sorry, principalities of the lesser worlds. Two of those three know the temptations of sweetness. So I did mention Yugal Link. I'm kind of curious if we can do something with that. So the problem is it is tough for me to find something that will accept nectar. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, I don't think I have a combination that's going to work here. So we'll just have to sit on this. I was hoping that I could make something of the rain, but uh, unfortunately I don't have the right combinations of skills. What I will do though is we will use our metal to take a quick look at Musgrave to Wolf. This bust is carved from wood. Cherry? Musgrave de Wolf, who was mocked as the bleating baron, even while Brancrude prospered quietly, who was renowned for his piety, but who won praise from the magus Julian Cosley, a quiet contradiction of a man. So again, doesn't tell us what order. This is usually an indication that, um, usually the indications that there's, yeah, so Thomas de Wolf was the second. Um, usually there's a book or something along those lines
I think it would go, well, you know what? We'll give it a shot. Uh, so I think we put Musgrave here. I think Gideon goes here, but I'll double check when the, when the information becomes available. Okay, we'll turn you into money again. Not my preference, but uh, what we're going to do next, um, I think I'm actually going to give, I think I'm going to give the Admonitory Automata project another shot. Oh, actually, we're going to be getting to summer, so I'll probably have something else to do. This will be the time when I think we can use the barber to uh, help us get through the house. Memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. Yeah, as expected, new uh, new season. So, um, if I keep going as I have so far, I'm basically going to wind up sort of spinning my wheels for a while. So. There's a couple of things that I can try and, you know, take a shot at. So Edery After, To Pay a Lady, Crossing to Noon, Rose of Hypatia. All of these are potential options. Rose of Hypatia is particularly interesting because of weaving and not working. But I think I'm going to try the Admonitory Automata project first. So the most... I can bring to bear on this. So the foresight would give me seven. And then the pattern, I think, would give me eight. So I want to be a little th thoughtful in terms of how I handle this. So let's do the health get me the foresight. And then the chopped will get me the pattern. I've already ma excuse me, mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. So right now I'm just trying to bring in as much um, as much as I can in terms of memories. Um, if I want to hire a barber, so the question here is what can I get away with at the Motley Tower? So uh, two trist. For, so really, I just need the impulse, but I don't need to worry about that today. Well, actually, you know what? Um, okay, I want to see how... Shucks. I need to use the tryst. All right, we're going to wait this out a little bit, but... Carried a memory like a flambeau, safe through the mazes of night. So the trick here is I want to see how the... Um, I want to see how watching the movie works first. Madame Olympie Bichet, essayist, illustrator, critic, edi editor of the Karisham Review. She also understands Ramson, but we do want her contact information. Uh, sorry, Mademoiselle. So the pleasure is all mine, librarian. This royal endeavor, I wonder what you think. No, don't tell me. I don't want us to get in trouble, either of us. This requires forge. Okay, Vinzant's Minglings, the metallurgist and skysmith, Everett Vinzant speaks of the sacred alloys, the alloys eternal, the alloys sufficient, the alloys intendant. Everett describes the voices and powers of mortals and immortals based on their composition by analogy to the sounds and strengths of bells based on the metals of their casting. 
Vincent warns that the mingling of metals of too great a nobility can produce the alloys incestuous. He suggests very cautiously that the means used by the sovereigns of the leashed flame to produce their heirs may have analogous issues. For though the crime of the sky might be circumvented, yet the law remaineth the law in spirit as in letter. So this gives us foresight. Next up, we've got advice on containment. Thirza Blake discusses ways to keep wood things out of trouble and Mansa's things in it. Thirza is irritatingly light on specifics, insisting above all that the duties of the adept are the duties of a host, and that a conjured spirit should be kept in as luxurious a vessel as possible. Thirza notes the similarities between the lantern-long habit of scrining, returning to the physical world despite their absence of a body, by entering a mirror or light and Pomander's techniques for confining Mansus Long to mirrors. She wonders whether Pomander himself might be lured to visit Hush House if provided with a sufficiently alluring scrine. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here is try to build out the, the film. So we'll add metal. Bells and Braceries, Foresight, Pattern. So seven, uh, 8 of 10. Now if this is going to work, it's probably going to be through another memory. But I do want to keep the shaft aside just in case. So we're now going to take the um, Trist. We will get another Foresight. So Deoris Volume 2 see how far we get. No, I am no believer, but my mother, she believed, and she used to talk of the second dawn. Of course, I did not take it seriously, but now the king's project. So strange. I would like to see what I can find in your collection. Truly, it might mean a second dawn, or a war. I would prefer the dawn, but then it might be both. Thank you, Librarian. Keep my visit between us two only, for now, if you don't mind. Good lord. Um, this is going to be really upsetting. It's an absolute Hail Mary. I don't think there's any possible way we're actually going to get this in time, but... Diaries Volume 1 in Latin, a 19th century reprint by the indefatigable Nathaniel Darcy Evers of a 14th century Latin translation of a 4th century work. This volume deals mostly with the hour called the Lionsmith, the hour called the Tribune of Scars, and with their enmity. The Lionsmith makes monsters to defeat the Tribune, but the Scars of the Tribune are each a weapon. So yeah, we got really unlucky on this one. Three extra effort soul. I can add the shop here, but it really, I really do need the um, the other shop on this one to be able to to make this work. chance. Okay. So 30 seconds off of this one. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I might just be eating up a shaft for no reason. 9.2. Yeah, not in, not, so close. If I could do something to delay it, that would be better, but it just doesn't work. Not today. The mysteries have defeated me for now. You can always try again later. Better now. All right. So make some money, and then we'll try and turn the uh, we'll try and turn the um, Trist into something. I think we have a reasonable expectation that we should be able to get that, though. Um, we'll give that another try a little bit later. Oh, all right. We will not try to bring the tryst back. I think we'll just say that today did not work as planned. Uh, what I might also try and do here is take the foresight. I think I'm going to sleep on that. So I can try the... Um, 
I could try the film again. Okay, memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. So, first things first. We're hiring a barber. In summer, the barber comes to keep the villagers kept. A shilling will buy his services. Barbers offer a moth and a little rose. Alternatively, add a soul card to find rarer guests who might be seeking employment. The itinerant barbers of the South Country will keep you clean and kempt, make sure you don't miss out on any news or gossip, and arrange matters so you aren't too troubled by vermin. Snip snip. So this is a little bit easier for us to work with. We will talk with the barber. First we'll talk about the tryst. Um, if I want, I can keep doing the fixing and mending. And in this case, I will use the health to get the the pattern. I need to make sure that both shaft are available. It's actually a fairly narrow path that I've set for myself, but I think it's worth it. comes neither of us knows yet but we will so what we'll do now we'll talk about the occult scrap I can discuss a memory with my assistant and of course with that I can just simply add another card certainly I've got no shortage of people to add here so Douglas Moore Suppression Bureau Hobbs End London uh, to make an invest invitation to Douglas Moore sufficiently enticing, you will need at least three lantern from Skills, Memories, Inks, or anything else. Okay, so I got a couple things that I want to do. First of all, we're going to restore the shaft because I may need more than one... Um, more than one element of the soul here. We've got the pattern, so we'll combine that with the foresight. And then the last, uh, the last step of this is that I want to have an element of the soul available so that I can get another foresight in case it asks me for a memory. So I'm kind of covering all of my bases here. This is probably overdoing it, but I can always uh, repurpose these towards you know, something at the sweet bones or, you know, trying to read another book or something like that. In this case, overdoing it is um, not terrible. Okay, now before I go too much further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk with the barber um, just because it'll give me a nice little stack of memories. We don't have a whole lot that we're going to do on uh, the Motley Tower second floor, although I would like to, to make, finally make some progress on this. So I could encourage my assistant, work with them, or for a little while, exalt them. Or I could just listen to whatever they might have to say. So here we'll just chat with the barber while we try and get prepared for the main thing that I'm focused on. And then for the rest of the day, we'll uh, try and take the opportunities when they come up. It's 1 a.m., so I'm going to take a note. I think this might be the last hour. Um, again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to... Uh, oversell it. If, if people want me to go longer, I will entertain the possibility. Um, but if... Um, I don't know, if people are feeling things are maybe getting a little repetitive, or there isn't a whole lot that's new, or maybe I'm a little less co coherent, uh, I figure it's probably better to stop before things get too, too off the rails. So... Um, but just let me know if you have any questions, if you have any, anything you'd like to see about the new game uh, or the new expansion, happy to discuss it. Um, but I figured I'd just give a bit of a warning ahead of time saying, all right, I'm starting to feel a little tired. Maybe a good time to pack it in. All right, so we don't have a whole lot of time, but I should be able to make something with the... I should be able to make something with the tryst. 
So yeah, in 37 seconds, we'll start watching the film. And we'll see where the rest of it goes. Better now. All right. So this, we read another foresight. So I guess we did on res... Did we do on resonance? We did Vincent's minglings. I think I'll do on resonance just to be sure. Okay. So now we're going to try watching this film again, the Admonitory Automata program. Uh, sorry, project. So metal here. Bells and Brasieries is still my highest forge. We add foresight at the top, and then we can add another memory, which in this case will be the pattern. So again, we're too short. The difference here is that if we get all elements of the soul again, I can now add two shaft. Um, now the ideal, of course, would be that I get something like, um, you know, like foresight makes it easier. But again, I have I have options. And we're still talking with the barber just because it does give me the opportunity to um, to consider some alternatives. Uh, mostly it's just a question in terms of what memory do I keep overnight. One of the things is I want to think about how I can use these occult scraps to... Um, I want to use them productively so I can add Olympi Bichet and uh, Hokebald to the writing case. All right, there's still a chance. So we've got Awen, Stuff Also Things, and Epiphany. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, this is definitely not what I was hoping for. On Resonance, Experiments in Ithistry by the Skysmith Everett Vinzant. Vinzant suggests percussion instruments that might be sympathetic to a number of hours and names. Some are more likely than others. Vinzant uncontroversially suggests uh, drums of various materials as the, as, sorry, as the sympathetic instruments for the Thunderskin and its ascendant Dwenderzons. He proposes bells of bronze and iron for the Lionsmith and Colonel, he spends some time on the design of a bee rattle for the Malachite, but doesn't seem entirely confident in his findings. So this was so that I could get a foresight that I would maybe turn into something that I can use with the opportunities. Of course, that's not how that turned out. So we will go fixing and mending. And I got to figure out something that I want to do with the forge. I mean, I don't have to. I could always just give it up. Um, there is a knock thing that I could do. Maybe we'll see if I can make a... I wonder if I can do some kind of knock recipe. So if I add the occult scrap... Glass blowing and vessel crafting, we get an ap amethyst ampule, which is not the most exciting choice, but. Secret threshold I would need to maintain. Okay, amethyst ampule it is. That's just because amethyst ampules are something that lasts, so in this case. I'm just converting that into something I can use. Will they come when you do call for them? Okay, now this is gonna be an interesting dilemma here. Um, I can take a look at forge things. So we have people like Ambrose Westcott, and that's not a bad way of getting some forge, but what I'm really looking for here is more than one in terms of forge. Um, I'm actually going to... Oh, I'm trying to remember if Awen... Like, I feel like Epiphany or Awen should give me forge, but I don't 100% remember. Um, the alternative... Um, I 
I'm just trying to think like there's more than just uh, Awen Epiphany and so it's Awen Epiphany and when I don't know the thing is I don't really feel like Awen really does fit Forge I want it to uh, you know what? I'm not going to give up. So I could maybe try something like giving up the T. Um, but I think in this case, I want to see what these give. So I'm going to, I'm just going to accept it and hope for the best. I'm now going to open up the second floor of the Mot uh, Motley Tower. A nasty theoplasmic miasma hangs around the room above. It's no longer strong, but it'll take years to dissipate to the point of safety. With the right help, I can raise counter influences. Okay, Owen. Oh, forge the kindled flame. So divine inspiration or just the right breath of fresh air at the right moment. So I think that was Epiphany that did it. The Admonitory Automata Project, footage of experimental devices under development in the Cookerbit under Governor Collar's supervision. The Admonitory Automata are nasty little things of spring and wire, but they all have merry faces painted of painted tin. The last item shown is a prototype towards something called a Condignator, which Collar says proudly will allow a prisoner to elaborate their own punishment. He hastens to add that he hopes that in the coming era, punishment will be an entirely obsolete concept. So for the AAP, ooh, that's two lockworks and clockworks. And a foresight, okay. So that'll certainly help me um, I'll probably take this up to level two. The question is, do I want to uh, do I want this to go even higher, or do I want to uh, do I maybe want to leave it? I don't think I have any elements of the soul that. Yeah. So my best bet here is just to sleep on the foresight because we're definitely going to want to use this with lock no not the foresight it should have been the solace oh well we will earn it next time amethyst ampule it has its uses but none of them are simple and few of them are safe Here we go. So, the dispensary. This room it may originally have served as a working dispensary, but some of, uh, sorry, some at least of its more eccentric fittings were added by Christopher Alopoli in his time here. By that point, he had served severed ties with his adoptive father. He'd been using the Alopoli name for years and had no access to the Strathcoin fortune. But traveling at night had sold surprisingly well, much better than his poetry, and he had a little money of his own by then, enough to indulge in his preferences. Okay, so we got a few different things in here. First of all, there's just a ton of stuff in this room. There's a brazen clock. It's not immediately apparent that this clock lacks hands, although when wound, it dutifully ticks. The Icororaral, no dawn knows a single color, and no sky knows only a single dawn. A mortar and pestle, crush, forge and nectar, it's a tool. A lethe, a dark and syrupy liquor favored in unnamed forest villages. There's his cordials separately. Each is undrinkable, but mix them, and they're only undrinkable after 15 minutes. Lambig Brusselendi, a chalice distilled from apples in the oldest forest of the Western continent. Desiccated witch worms. Actually, we can move those up here. Scaptodon fang. It is rare for the lionsmith to make scaptodons now, but they are difficult to kill and live a very long time. 
Iotic Essence. In the later operations of the Forge, the Madrigad yields to the True Forge of Days, and the Essence begins to redden. The bit about the True Forge of Days nearly got St. Melisinthe burned for heresy, but no one ever said that she was wrong about the second part. Glassfinger Toxin again, Lethe, and Lethe Lees, the dark aftermath of a dark drink. We also have a tall candlestick, elegant simplicity, another serpent-styled glass, carved snakes writhe down the frame, a prominent inscription reads to the librarian Gervinus in earnest of our wager, a sly alembic, a cheeky decanter of wine fortified with unusual influences, domain reveline, our beloved spice scales, so spicing, um, also counts as kitchenware, redolent of decades of piquant passage. Catwink, the smell of catwink puts off vermin, but it is very difficult to read in sunlight. An ink of containment. Wolf snow ampule, we've got a viper egg, a serpent in waiting. Snoodle jar, useful for calcination, purification, alteration, invaluable for snoodlery. Tanglebrag, a clod of wood, leaves, and feathers that might draw the attention of the entity called Knowing Knot. January Sanguinary, also called Sanguis Sultandus, or by the ignorantly superstitious, the true blood of St. Januarius. Bitter black salts, bitter as chicory, dark as secrets, but the first rung on the traditional alchemical ascent. Westcott's compounds, reagents, and activants to enhance alchemical operations, or the flavor of pipe tobacco. And Icor Vitreus, a pale and watchful fluid, can be gathered sometimes when the door in the eye is opened. Uh, also, sorry, we've got the Shears of the Sisterhood, Black Iron Shears, marked with the Sisterhood's Triple Knot, and Glinting Cranial Tchotchke, and Normal Cranial Tchotchke. We all of us come to this condition in the end. Not all of us are fortunate enough to be lovingly buffed and fixed carefully to a stylish wooden stand. Okay, so I'm going to want to find some Heart or Sky for the third floor of the Motley Tower, and I'm going to want to use uh, six elements of the soul of some kind to catalogue the next set of books. It may not be a bad idea for me to hatch the serpent as well. I'm not asking for too much, am I? Okay, so first of all, we want to level up Lock, Risk, and Clockworks. That's just a question of getting uh, the relevant memory. I'm wondering if it may not be a bad idea for me to bring Denzel in so we can talk with him. I think I'm going to do that. I'm always welcome at Denzel Smithy. And I will go to the Sweet Bones to earn a little bit of money, but we'll turn that around pretty quick. Uh, I don't think the rain's going to change much here. The only thing I could see maybe affecting it would be the Orchid Transfigurations of Feast, but the challenge here is it's maddening how close I am. So we have the uh, Orchid Transfigurations of Feast. I could use the Spice Scales. And I could actually take the rain as a memory. But the catch is, is that I don't have any grail for soul. And I don't believe... Oh, hang on! Pentiments and precursors. Yes. All right. Never mind. I can master this mystery. Enough grail to match mystery grail. I forgot we had pentiments and precursors. Denzel rarely works for free, but he won't take payment helping a friend. All right, Oriflam's established 1776, sent signed sciences. Dear librarian, we would like to offer you this opportunity to purchase The Beekeeper's Ends, dialogues with bees and uses for honey, as erratically recorded by Ricardo Milagro, gardener of Hush House in Musgrave's time. So it's a little expensive. We have a tin spin tria. Um, we'll still have a gold by the end of this. For those of you wondering about uh, the name, Kitchen Garden. In 1652, Musgrave de Wolf caught a traveling peddler stealing vegetables from his garden, an eccentric wanderer who went by Ricardo Milagro. Musgrave's ancestors would have simply hung the fellow, but Musgrave decreed seven years' service in the garden instead. When the seven years were up, Milagro had proved his worth as a gardener 
and chose to make Brand Krug his home. The grapevines here are cultivated with rootstock he carried in his pack. The Further Adventures. Oh, we want to be talking with the blacksmith. Speak to Denzel, he might even reply. So the aim here is to try and get some knock and sky to use uh, to level this up. Now if I want, I can use the occult scrap. It feels like a little bit of a waste, but I can do it if I have to. All right, so this is going to be so that I can restore it. It is summer. I am sitting on the bench outside the sweet bones, eating crumbly cheese and nettle wrappings and good black rye bread, soaking up the sun. All right, that stolen secret will already help me with uh, lockworks and clockwork, so let's make some progress on that right now. So again, because this is level one, I need one memory to be able to level that up. We'll use the stolen secret here. Um, oh, but I don't have a shaft available yet, so I'm just gonna tuck that away. Okay, and let's restore this next one. Always more to learn. Improve the skill to level 2. This will increase its aspects, which will help with crafting, and make it suitable for higher branches in the Tree of Wisdoms, if you haven't already committed it. Now we do have a couple of specific plans for Lockworks and Clockworks next. So um, when I take a look at what I have right now, the little ways of little machines, this gives me three Knock and two Sky. So one option that I have is to use no uh, Knock to level up Lockworks and Clockworks. Now, one of the things that I do in my playthroughs, and one of the reasons why I've been reluctant to commit uh, Elements of the Soul to the Tree of Wisdoms is that I very frequently will actually use the first row. I'll usually put languages in there. So I'm a bit behind on that just simply because it's taken some effort to try and get the correct characters in to learn the, the given language. Um, but I'd kind of like to hold on to that priority. And so that means that... Uh, at minimum, the remaining elements of the soul should have um, one, or should be level, or not elements of the soul, the remaining skills should be uh, level two or higher. And one of the reasons why that's important is if you take a look, so I can bring furs and feathers up, I can bring surgeries and exsanguinations up, I can bring edicts liminal up, uh, I can bring glass blowing and vessel crafting up, and I can bring sights and sensations and sky stories up. Some of these are actually quite helpful. So it's tempting to bring Lockworks and Clockworks up because it does have knock and it does have sky, but I think So Furs and Feathers is tempting for the scale that it has and Edicts Liminal is tempting for its moth. I think I'm going to go for the Edicts Liminal on this one. The Orchid Transfigurations, A Feast, a compilation of quasi-Rosicrucian allegories, supposedly by Robert Flood. This is in the original Latin. The illustrations are certainly striking. They flush the skin and glow beneath the eyelids after the book is closed. We must devour to be devoured. We cannot be undevoured, as we cannot be unborn. So we get an intuition for that. We get desires and dissolutions. We should already have an intuition collection. And from that, we will now add Desires and Dissolutions. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. He does a lot with silence, this man. 
So again, the hope here is that we get something with Knock or Moth to level up. I can use the Occult Scrap if pressed. I'd rather not, though. So let's think about how I want to use the remaining elements of the soul over the course of the day. So I guess what I should be doing, I should actually be... Um, I should probably be cataloging some of these books. So this book was probably written around the time of the Hush House of Hush House's Curia period, roughly the 1700s to 1800s. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. I think we'll do the same with the health. And I think I will restore one more shaft just because if I have to, I can use it to get a knock memory. Another leaf on the tree of wisdoms. Desires and dissolutions. The boundaries between flesh, pearl, and pleasure are equally contingent. And here we've got our bronze spin tree back. And the beekeeper's ends. So. Not a book we're going to read right away, but I'm happy enough to own it. I think we could probably consolidate some of these, so I'll put the tens together. Oh, right, the tens are overflow. Congratulations, this is now achievable. <laughs> Mostly I'm just trying to keep the, um, the can't read books uh, all in one place. Okay, now if I want to start learning some languages, let's take a minute at the writing case. So, um, Olympia Bichet needs ma- ooh. If that's true, I think I've been thinking about the ring. Uh, the um, I think I've been thinking about the inks all wrong. I just need to think about the ink that I can produce, not the ink that I that matches the recipient. Uh, that will help me level up the edict liminal. So. So this one's a little funny here, right? So Lockworks and Clockworks needs Knock and Sky. Edict's Liminal needs Knock and Moth. So what happens here, because I'm leveling up Edict's Liminal, this has a, it's a lesson with Knock is the way to interpret that. So I need a memory with Knock or Moth because I'm leveling up Edict's Liminal. And then I need either Knock or Moth under effort. So this is why I'm able to use Lockworks and Clockworks. I would not, if I had some kind of Sky, the Sky would not be sufficient for leveling this up. Okay. I guess with the surplus Knock, I'll probably just uh, catalog another book. Locksmith's Dream, Stolen Reflections. So a four sky text seems pretty achievable and Old Copper Nose and the Softer Metal, less achievable. You know what, I'm gonna have to put the eights together again. I'm slightly annoyed that I had to do that, but. Skill is now level two, its power aspects have also increased. So I don't think this is really gonna move the needle too much on its own, but right now I'm just trying to get this to a level that's useful for me when I start bringing in some of these um, languages. So while I'm, while I have a spur element of the soul, we'll grab grab one of the texts. What does not bark? Alexander Props waits warily of Calyptra, a law, principle, or society which prevents the dissemination of dangerous knowledge. So four moon is definitely not hard for us to, to work with. 
I normally would probably hang on to the intuition, but I don't think I can sleep on that. So we've got foresight, hindsight, regret, and fear. Yes, the intuition is the one that I would actually want. <laughs> um, I suppose old copper nose in the softer metal is a likely one, so let's hang on to the foresight. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. Memories fade, assistance departs, but the soul is refreshed. All right, so we'll wait on the foresight. So I think in this case, uh, if I take Westcott's desk, so we take the metal, bells and braziers, foresight, then I add old copper nose and the softer metal. This one is a bells and braziers text. Okay, so I'd actually be using this. I'd probably level up glass blowing and vessel crafting and maybe sights and sensations out of that one. Um, we can combine that with the mortar and pestle. We don't have to, but this will work. I can master this mystery. Still don't know what the result is, but that's fine. Um, Let's see what the weather is. Clouds. Okay, so that doesn't do too much on its own. Um, so gardening wouldn't be bad with the health. Or maybe we just go... Let's try and read the books that we can. So what does not bark, we'll take the tryst, we combine that with rhyme and remembrance and the lunar globe, or alternatively the clouds, but let's go for the lunar globe. Moon a culmination, I can master this mystery, enough moon to mat uh, match mystery moon. Uh, stolen reflections, now I think where I'm sitting on that, I still only have two sky, so we'd actually need a memory for that. Um, but we can pull it off, so let's do... So we'll read Apollo and Marsyas with Shapt. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. And when... Yeah, we'll catalog a book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's nocturnal period, after the turn of the century. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. So I was trying to think about how I could get some more inks, but I do have some opportunities with these books now, so I wanted to capitalize on those first. Okay, the Perugian Diaries. This is a good one. So, in 1907, at the age of 18, Christopher Alopoli left Strathcoyne's household to study theology at the University of Perugia in Italy, enrolling under the name Christopher Strathcoyne. Apollo and Marsyas, the libretto of a lost opera concerning the contest between Apollo and Marsyas and its tragic outcome. The librettist is identified only by their initials. In the original myth, Marsyas lost the musical contest and was flayed by Apollo, who later regretted it. In this version, Marsyas' skin has a further history. The skin of Marsyas gives oracles and is later smuggled to Phrygia, where the priestesses of Sibyl use it for a drum. At the climax, the striking of the drum drives would-be violators of the priestess to a suicidal madness. The opera ends with a wistful hymn from the youngest priestess on the beauty of mountain pines. Okay, so I have a little bit of work that I, uh, I need to do now, so let's just take a quick second and see what I'm getting. So we're going to get probably two bells and braziers. So this would mean that I want to level up Furs and Feathers with um, 
scale or sky, which would mean I use my health, although I'm already uh, the health is already spoken for. Sights and sensations would use sky and winter, so I don't have anything that can level that up. So glass blowing and vessel crafting is an option, and that is going to require knock. So we'll use rest and refreshment. We'll recover that. So that's one of them spoken for. Uh, remembering again that in this case we are getting bells and braseries, which is forge and sky. Uh, so the remaining forge, I guess, would be transformations and liberations. So I suppose that's another shaft. Yeah. Oh yeah, we could use the clouds for that. So yeah, I actually feel okay about that. Oh, but I've got the storm already, so let's use the health. Uh, Prugian Diaries is actually a little more tempting here, so I'm going to switch up the order. Nope, but I don't. Or hang on. Lockworks and Clockworks does the trick. I can master this mystery. Enough sky to match mystery sky. All right. Old Copper Nose and the Softer Metal, a disgraceful compendium of rivaled poetry about the habits and corruptions of Henry VIII. Henry's great misfortune, his crushing injury at a jousting bout, has left him unable to stand any straighter than a splintered withy. The most savage mockery is reserved for Henry's great debasement, where the corruption of his softer metal is supposed to have crept into the coin of the realm. The last and most serious lampoon makes seditious references to the Crucible Revolution. Again, uh, talking about metals and Henry, perhaps that is not a coincidence. <laughs> Um, here we go. More foresight. All right. We don't have the shaft yet. Actually, we don't have any elements of the soul yet, but I'm thinking what we'll do is we will move up, um, which was it? I guess glass blowing, blowing and vessel crafting and nothing else because that was available. Oh yes. And transformations and liberations. I'll rate that one slightly higher, actually. What does not bark? Alexander Props writes, writes warily of Calyptra, a law or principle or society which prevents the dissemination of dangerous knowledge. Calyptra, like the planet that occludes the star or the doylean dog that fails to bark, can be identified only by its absence. Even the name, I think, must be a mask. Lifter is said to make exceptions specifically for the libraries of the Watchman's Tree. Does it make those exceptions so the hours can make use of them? Okay, so we get a storm for that, which is good. Uh, edicts inviolable. And I'll add that to Apollo and Marsyas. Okay, so let's add edicts available to my list of capabilities. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Uh, next up, better now. So we will, well, when we can, we'll use transformations and liberations. Uh, I'll get another shot to level things up. Another leaf on the tree of wisdoms, the precepts and occlusions and dissolution. Their jealous enforcements is the nature of the Calyptra. Two heart and a moon. So the heart, oh no, yeah, we're already good for heart. But I will level up transformations and liberations using the clouds. There's always more to learn. And again, this is because I want to put the languages in the first rows of the uh, Tree of Wisdom. So that's what I'm kind of building this around. All right. I'm ready to go with glass blowing and vessel crafting. In this case, we need a sky. So the storm was helpful here. Bells and braseries shopped. There's always more to learn. So I think tomorrow in game, we've got the Curia and the Baronial books. Both of those seem to make sense to level up. Uh, and then we should be able to get the Locksmith's Dream leveled up at minimum.
All right. For four years, since his adoption from a Bristol orphanage, Alopoli served as Strathcoin's pupil and protege, but his relationship with this austere and secretive man was always complicated. His journal confides, I still think Fraser's intentions are good, certainly he agrees, but I've never understood the final goal of his investigations. He was never prepared to enlighten me, and good intentions or not, I can no longer bear this dream of eyes. We've agreed to part almost amicably. Alopoli left Perugia in 1909 without completing his degree. He had long lost interest in his studies, and the latter half of his journal is concerned with stu his studies of Umbrian folk songs, and notes towards his own compositions, which are of widely varying quality. One of the better ones, in the Marshes of Night, suggests that he visited the old Lake Fusinus near Ortuccio. So the cheerful ditty is helpful here. We've got strings and songs. I'm actually going to put this on its own shelf, so... If we had a Mazarine desk, that would probably be more appropriate, but... And then let's add strings and songs. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Another leaf on the tree of wisdoms. The harmonies of the lower skies are here reproduced. I guess technically, nope, uh, we need everything we can get. Or not exactly. Yeah, we can use the cheerful ditty to read um, Locksmith's Dream. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. Okay. So we need to speed things up for just to... All right. Um... So my best bet here is probably... Well, it's really anything that'll take Sky. So if I do Ambrose's desk with the shaft, so we take the cheerful ditty, we combine uh, locksmith stream stolen reflections so then we add bells and brasery so we're one short and then we add the astrolabe we're good to go um, we already know the weather so the clouds aren't going to change that much so with that in mind maybe it's time that we catalog the two remaining books uh, so we'll use the tryst for one And then I guess the shaft for the other, or metal for the other. I've usually used shaft for making money for one reason or another. And then the health, I do have an opportunity to do some gardening. So if I want some more grapes, now would actually not be a bad time. Actually, yeah, that's probably the best use right now. Because I don't have that much of a surplus. I was hoping to get one. Okay, so we've got the Radical Measure, manifesto for experimental and dangerous sounding evocatory poetry written sometime in the 19th century by Dr. Aaron Peel, notoriously in, a notoriously inconsistent and incoherent text, apparently produced in a tearing hurry. That's an aspirational read. The Carmine Petal Revisited, an apparently theoretical project by Lionel of the Society of the Noble Endeavor, which might permit imprisonment of a renegade forge name, a, heavy, a very heavily revised edition of an earlier, even more controversial work. There's the 12. Um, here's what I'm going to do with these. 12, 14, there you go. Okay, so no new books. Um, I think tomorrow in game, maybe I'll start thinking about how I can attract more, um, how I can attract some of the people with cards into the, into the house. 
As he used to say, my youth, the day is done, and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So maybe one of the things that I want to do is take a look at the different skills that I've got at a high enough level and say, which of these can produce inks? So for instance, we've got the inks of containment, but I don't have any winter. So the fact that that can make an ink is not that special. But if I have something that can easily generate a cat wing, I don't need to worry about it being a moon, uh, a moon ink so long as I can generate it. The Locksmith's Dream, Stolen Reflections, the fourth volume of Teresa Galmier's expansive work, no longer a discussion on the, of the dreams of artisans, but a valuable survey of other works. The tone is calmer than that of Trespasses, but occasionally fearful, even paranoid. This volume was published in 1926, but almost immediately recalled and pulped by the publisher at the request of the author or possibly the authorities, depending on which story you believe. A few copies survive. Janus is the gatekeeper, the twin god, the god that wounds, the presager of changes, the sun, the moon. So we identify him with the watchman, the twins, with the mother, with the forge, with the menisgate, and the madrigad. He cannot be all of these, can he? The Flamines knew the church, knew the dry land, knew Elagablus. Is he then synthesis, or is he something else? In Galicaea, they call him Aeneas Lamius, but the Obliviates are notorious for their slanders. Janus has, they say, not one face, but two, to which I reply, why only one? Why only two? Her Sultan Cosley, according to Thomas Love Denman, once agreed that Janus was all the gods and none, but later Her Salt described him as all the gods, and Cosley favored none. Denman was a sinister dilettante, but this rings true of them both. So, revelation for our trouble. Watchman's Paradoxes. Let's add this to the revelation pile. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill, Watchman's Paradoxes. I'm trying to think if there's something smart for me to do with the shaft right now. Excuse me, the foundry is about as close as I can get to that. So let's just see with the Ragged Crossroads, so Bittersweet Certainty and a Libidic Tincture. Again, I'm looking for cheap inks right now, so uh, Wistful Air and Bitter Black Salts. There's his Cordials and Westcott's Compounds, Dear Day Lens, Westcott's Compounds, Amethyst Ampule, Awakened Feather. Uh, we do not yet have a Moth item. So one way I could test that would be to add the Skin Shuck Mead, which has got a lot of moth um, influence. Okay, Tangle Brag doesn't do much. Transformations and Liberations, Refulgen and Bitter Black Salts. I don't believe Refulgen counts as an ink for me to uh, write with. Us Blowing and Vessel Crafting, again Amethyst Ampule and Dear Day Lens, Disciplines of the Hammer. We don't actually know anything on that one. I suppose Perinculate would help me with the edge. And then for the forge, we could probably use Iotic Essence, which is right here. A little bit of Black Salts. Um, how on earth am I going to figure out the moon on this one? Um, Catwigs a start, but uh, I would need... Oh, you know what? I bet I can add the Whispering Sand. Okay, there we go. Missed Midnight Mark. Edix Marshall's a bit funny. Um, I don't... Well... It's a bit much. Um. 
Yeah, there's not. I'm I'm trying to trying to cast a wide net in terms of some of the things that I can look at, but some of these are getting a little absurd in terms of the the collections I'm trying. So right now, it's fair to say that I'm coming up short in terms of interesting. Oh, you know what? There is one other thing I can try. Um, if I take Inks of Containment, just throw Solomon's Preparation in here. Okay, yeah, so the Eigengrau, unfortunately, isn't what I need here. Uh, crumbs. Okay. Um... Can probably do better. I may just turn this into money at this point if there's nothing I can directly do. So, Shadowed Atrium, talking with um, Reverend Timothy would help us here. Um. There's one other thing I can do. Another amethyst ampule. And now I can add Hokebald into the collection. But will they come when you do call for them? Another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms, Watchman's Paradoxes, the, uh, that amber preserves and is preserved by light, that to hatch is not to die, that the sun. There is a place behind the world called the Mansus. Deeds that would be impossible in the world are inevitable there. The Watchman, who knows all the ways of the Mansus, knows how to make these deeds possible in the waking world. Okay. So. I think that's it. I'm trying to think if there's any other steps that I can take. I can try and restore an element of the soul and all of that, but honestly, I'll let the I'll let the day play out. There's an amethyst ampule. I don't even think I can preserve this revelation actually, so I don't even have a memory to take over for the rest of the day. Okay, well that's one thing I would have maybe liked to do differently, but I'm pretty okay with how the day was left, and I think this is not a bad place for us to leave the playthrough. Um, now, just overall plans, so I will continue I will continue this playthrough on my YouTube channel. Um, so this will actually be the start of the next uh, the next playthrough. Um, the one thing that I do wish I could have gotten through a little bit more was prepping for the salon. So uh, we did show a couple of recipes that we could make. The one thing that was sort of holding me back is I don't have a great way of generating a lot of inks. And um, what was holding me back there is I would like to talk to some of these people to get languages so I can commit some elem uh, some skills to the Tree of Wisdom. So. I deliberately held back on that, but it's because I have a couple of ideas that I think will help the long-term viability of the playthrough. So for the immediate uh, the immediate term, um, we've got a handful of books which I can read if I want. Um, these are really if I have nothing else to do. Um, on top of that, <clears throat> if I feel that the language thing is holding me back too far, I can use the things like the existing inks. I'd maybe be reluctant to use something strong like perinculate, um, but there's plenty of sort of lesser inks running around that I it wouldn't be too much of a hardship for me to be able to put those together. I also do have the TRN Limited and the Cater and Hero order form, so if I want to do some cooking, I can actually do that over here. I just only have the one health, though, so there's not a whole lot that I can do without, um, or you know, I'd just be doing one a day and I, I feel like there's maybe some faster things that I can do cooking wise. So the last thing that would be interesting for me to do, assuming that I don't get, um, assuming that I don't get some kind of windfall in terms of, you know, elements of the soul or languages or something like that, 
Um, just trying to angle it so that I can get a couple of advantages in terms of opening up some rooms. So things like the third floor Motley Tower, Shadowed Atrium. Um, a lot of these are sort of rooms that shouldn't be that hard for me to open up. It's really more just a question in terms of what elements of the soul I'm willing to use and what uh, crafting items I'm willing to give up. Finally, because I do have a fair amount of money, if I feel like I'm really stuck, what I can always do is just bring in one of the special hirelings, but I haven't really needed to do that so far and I figured I might as well hold it off. But that's roughly uh, where the playthrough is sitting. Um, I'm happy to... Happy to answer any questions at the end, but it's almost two in the morning for me, so I think probably now is not a bad time for me to, uh, to leave it there. Uh, for those of you, I will try and get some links out. So for those of you who are deep into the secret histories, uh, there is the Weather Factory Etsy. There's everything from notebooks to pen pendants to a tarot deck. Uh, everything seems to be 25% off for the celebration of House of Light. Uh, I will just mention that this is the uh, big DLC. So previous their previous game, Cultist Simulator, uh, they did sort of multiple little DLC, um, and this one here, for those of you with the Perpetual Edition, all of that, you kind of, kind of think of that as all of that plus a little bit more bundled into one. So the Perpetual Edition people still have the value, um, but in this case it's one big DLC that's deeply integrated into the game, as opposed to the previous one where there were sort of like three five dollar uh, DLCs or something like that. Um, so, and for those of you that don't have the Perpetual Edition, there's a couple of ways that you can get this 10% off for the main House of Light expansion. Uh, alternatively, you could get a little bit more of a discount if you buy the Anthology Edition that will contain the base game, Book of Hours, then the House of Light DLC, as well as this lovely soundtrack that you're listening to here. It's one that I'm quite fond of. Uh, and of course, if you already own the game, you can complete the, um, you can complete the bundle, uh, I know I'm surprised when people say that it's something that always happens with Steam because I can tell you from experience it's not. Um, but in this case here, if you do own the game and you do decide that you want to have the uh, anthology edition, you can combine it and you're, uh, you'll get whatever you know the appropriate uh, discount is, unless something changes, but I imagine it won't. If you are looking for me, uh, there's a couple places you can find me. So I will be continuing the playthrough on YouTube. And then I will be doing another, uh, I'll be doing my own run. This is a separate run, which I was running through the beta, but I'll be finishing that. Um, and that's on my Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash system chalk. So if you want to continue seeing this particular playthrough, if you want to see this video, I will be uploading that on uh, on YouTube when I can. Obviously, I've been streaming for about 13 hours now, so first thing I'm going to do is get some rest. <laughs> um, but once all of that is done, I will make sure that that's uploaded and that we are ready to go. And finally, I hope all of you get a chance to enjoy this wonderful game. I'm very grateful to a Weather Factory for inviting me out. It's a little melancholy because I know that they're going to be working on the third game, which means that there's going to be a while between now and when I get a chance to share a new game with you. Um, this doesn't mean I, I have in the past uh, done sort of renewal um, streams, just something to kind of keep the attention out. Um, so, you know, as far as Weather Factory is concerned, uh, if they're interested, I, I am definitely available to them. I think they're a wonderful developer. They've given me lots of opportunities. And, um, you know, I really, I really just do enjoy being able to share these experiences with, uh, with all of you. Um, but um, for now, we are going to say good night to the House of Light. I hope you all enjoy this DLC as much as I have. And for those of you who are first trying Book of Hours, I hope you have a wonderful time in Hush House, whether or not you are looking at the DLC, because it's a wonderful game in its own, its own right. So have a good, uh, good evening. I hope you all have a lovely weekend for those of you who are starting it, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.